Welcome back to Heresy Hammer for episode uh, episode eight. I think this is episode eight, isn't it? Yes. Uh, where we are continuing to look at our uh, each legion in turn. Last time, last episode, we did the Iron Warriors, and this time we are doing the Imperial Fist. And I suspect this is going to be a popular show because the everybody seems to be doing uh, Imperial Fist. We have very luckily got Harry. Uh, with us, uh, who is a good friend of uh, mine and Lee's, um, and is a hardcore in heresy enthusiast. He has a number of different armies, but also has been featured on Warhammer Community as Ooh. well. Uh, and you can see Harry's hashtag uh, there. So if you don't, sorry, his um, his uh, I don't know what do you call it, an, an Instagram, at, an at, at. right? So his at there. Um, uh, if you don't go and follow him, go and follow him. He does some amazing work. His militia is. Chef Kiss, uh, good, but more recently right. he's been uh, dabbling in um, uh, Alpha Legion, and just before that, some really interesting um, Imperial Fist uh, Templars, and he did it before it was cool, right? So um, really, really cool to see. Uh, we have lost for this episode, though, uh, John Yay. and Paul. John and Paul <laughs> are axed uh, from, from this episode, but I'm sure they will be back at some point. John has got his uh, wedding today. Not quite sure why me and Lee weren't invited to that. Yeah. Uh, um, but, maybe Paul uh, was. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe was. Paul was a bit cagey about oh, what yeah. he was doing as well. Like, not on oh, no, 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 I'm just I'm busy. I can't. I can't. Oh, I'm sure there's somewhere else supposed to be doing stuff. <laughs> Damn it. This, oh, man, this is awkward. <laughs> um, but we've got Harry, who was a, 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 a fantastic replacement for both Paul and John combined as well. Uh, so there's loads of stuff that we want to uh, show you today. But just a quick word uh, about our two sponsors. So uh, the first one is myself, Meadows Miniatures, uh, as a commission painting studio. Um, and if you are interested in getting a heresy or 40k army painted or a Star Wars Legion army, whatever you play painted, uh, just uh, ping me a message. But also Cryptic Cabin, which is a local gaming store uh, in uh, sort of the Wokingham Bracknell area. Um, so uh, go and support those guys. They're a local gaming store um, and they're doing some uh, great stuff over there. They've just opened up a new store as well, actually, like heading towards Bracknell. And if you want to buy something uh, from them, then you can use our affiliate link below so as i said it's a big episode today we're going to try and breeze through this as quickly as possible but we do want to go in depth on each of the units that we've currently got for the imperial fist um and um we want to kind of open this up as a big tactical discussion so if you're somebody who is really motivated by tactica um and is thinking about tinkering with their imperial fist legion this is the episode uh for you but before we have a look at that we will have a look at what has been going on lee i'm going to pass this over to you so this is this is interesting this one so we did uh we talked about commander kind of two episodes ago um, yeah. we kind of did it where we kind of spoke about it with the information that we had at the time uh but some people in the comments kind of pointed out a number of things well, we looked at one of the issues last week yeah um, but do you want to talk about the issue that again that has been pointed out uh, no, this, this, so we were talking about commander guessing what the demon rules were but obviously having not bothered looking at the main rule book uh, and it wasn't people in the comments. It was actually fucking Harry here. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I saw this cop. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was Harry who was like, oi, dickheads. Uh, <laughs> are in the rule book, like open your eyes. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So essentially, I mean, this is the last time I ever want to talk about Commander because I feel like we're talking about him every fucking yeah and, and you'll never see him you'll never yeah, see him yeah yeah yeah. Never see him. yeah but essentially yeah i didn't even realize but the demon rules are up in the main rule book um and they have changed from the last edition haven't they yeah uh, i think they're slightly different around there well from what i recall the toughness is slightly different like so i yeah. just to remember like it was minus two toughness on um, game turn six or game turn five but now yeah. it's game turn seven is minus two so i i think that like they're just strong the fact that they start um with uh, kind of like plus plus one toughness is it like or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah it's just yeah. strength and toughness plus one game one. turns yeah. one and two which uh, it's all been bumped back kind of mer, yeah, how yeah. many turn one charges are you going to be getting off but not many yeah but just be careful like, i think if you play demons or are about to play demons uh and you are playing a, a sort of a starties 
uh, just you don't want to be too aggressive on those first two turns, especially yeah. if they have the warp portal still, where they got to re-roll their invulnerable saves. And that was always a mistake. You know, infiltrating armies that try to get quite close to them, they were always like absolutely slaughtered because you don't want to push them too close to the warp portals. But yeah. we'll see when the demon book drops. It'll be in the next couple of uh, months, I would have thought. Maybe next well, month. I'm hoping it'll be this month, but who fucking knows? I really want them to release the demon PDF now. And uh, yeah. what have we got? The militia, isn't it? We've got the militia PDF still. Oh, we- that's a militia. Is we've got so. two months to the end of that roadmap and we've got yeah. two pdfs to come out so so it's so going to be demons the militia. they said on the roadmap that one was coming out in august but we never got a pdf no we, we had we had a white dwarf um with a heresy battle report in it with the oh, right. sons oh, of horus right. and that had demon allies in it points yeah that so points, oh, interesting. points of the brutes and things i yeah. think we assumed that oh it cool we'll, we'll get, the, get the rules but they did the job so interesting okay well we shall wait and see and i have no doubt we will look at demons uh demons again i did find um in the previous edition that um uh, when i went to greetings of the warp say there were about 40 players there was always about four or five demon players there um uh, which i thought was interesting so sort of disparate they always felt disproportionately popular um yeah. but i wonder if it's because lots of people had 40k demon forces and yeah, then exported them over to um 30k so it'll be interesting to see what what happens next but i cool. really want to add them to my word bearers so I'm yeah, really yeah 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 so. they've got some great models for them as well hopefully the rules won't be shit but yeah <laughs> so see the demon rules they are up in the subtype um rules of the main book Awesome. Uh, so, Lee, do you want to talk about this one as well? Because I seem to remember talking about defence lines last time. So we were talking about Aegis defence lines and we were saying, we were questioning whether you could destroy a yeah. defence line. Do you yeah. remember? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Um, and none of us really knew the answers. So I had a quick look at the rules uh, and it talks about fortifications and it says you can destroy fortifications. Right. And this is a type of fortification, but this is a fortification barricade. I think you've right. got fortification building off the top of my head and fortification barricade. Right. Um, and then I found this rule. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you were an international uh, viewer watching this, this is our good friend Will, uh, <laughs> who who, um, who always. In every list he takes, be it Raven Guard, Salamanders, <laughs> Iron Hands, he always takes an Aegis defense line. And this man is responsible for the rise of the Aegis defense line in the past, <laughs> the past, the past 12 months in particular. Um, so this is this is Will here. Um, I Sorry, was, like, I've never had any official training on Photoshop. I mean, I don't know that <laughs> ah, it doesn't look like it. This is seems impressive. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let me know this what you're doing. Some of my best work, yeah, I think. <laughs> but, yeah, essentially the rule states that Aegis defence lines cannot be destroyed, which is a shame. Sounds like bullshit to me, to be honest. Yeah. And just, so, pick it, just pick it up. Strength 8 pass on the Aegis defence line, that'd be amazing. But I find it weird that you can blow up a bunker, but you can't blow up a little wall. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a shame, because it would have at least, you know, like... Added some jeopardy into taking Asia's defence line, right? Because at the moment, yeah. yeah, you've got to get up close and personal to get 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 past it. They're not quite as good as they were because they give a five up now, I think. Yeah. Um, but they're still they're still really really good. I just find it a bit weird that you can blow up a fucking whole bunker, but you can't blow up a. <laughs> you just. Wall, but, line, yeah. but yeah, that's so they weren't really rules corrections, but they were just kind of updates from stuff we were talking about. Cool. All right. Nice one, Lee. Thank you nice very show. much. Let's, uh, let's crack on with it. So um, we're going to have a look at some Heresy Hammer. As always, it is nearly impossible to pick just sort of six or eight that we do on every single show because there's some absolutely amazing stuff going on. We must be close to about 2,000 um, kind of pictures on that uh, Heresy, the hashtag Heresy Hammer, which is absolutely fantastic. So keep making sure you use it just to mix up the algorithm a little bit as well. If you haven't used it for a while, make sure you use uh, Heresy Hammer uh, because we'd love to see what you do. Uh, so first up, we've got an absolutely gorgeous conversion for an Emperor's Children um uh an emperor's children praetor i'm assuming or centurion from uh flinty uh flinty three or flinty i i i um it kind of i i'm could i don't think i could name all the parts of it but i think it's got garrow's kind of torso um eidolon's uh shoulder pauldrons maybe it's got legs off of um 
the so uh, the uh, terminators the, is the lower one? legs the, the 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 upper legs is still the garrow model i believe right okay and he's cut off the lower legs and replaced them Ooh, with, it, it looks uh, amazing like I, I would I, I would say this is as good as the one that forge world has um mm. has created and and not only that it's um it's a really brilliant kind of imperial kind of like purple so it's got kind of like bluey tones to it i think but the uh, non-metallic metal on the banner in particular is just so good like i saw this and immediately started following this guy um and he's done some amazing other units as well so if you don't follow uh flinty <coughs> go, uh follow him uh harry you're a uh a alpha legion enthusiast at the moment do you want to talk us about um Abela, Abelard Lindsay, do you want to talk us through these? Uh, what do you think of these bad boys? Yeah, well, I think one of the big things that people are realizing now for Legion is how easy it is to make an effective scheme. Yeah. And I think what you've got here is a really good example of just a super effective, but, and I'm sure there's, you know, there's no malice to this, but probably quite a simple scheme to push out. Yeah. Um, it's just that really nice metallics hit with some nice weathering. You've just you've not even got any spot colours there really because no. the metallics just do the job. Yeah. With the transfers, black bolters, and then some really nice basing just to set them off. Yeah. Um, yeah, the just, bases are awesome, aren't they? They're it's just really a really cool. nice example of the amazing Mark Six kit, I yeah. think. Um, yeah. and just chuck just chuck a pad on the sergeant and yeah. you've just got a yeah. nice, unique, really solid looking looking yeah. unit. Yeah, definitely worth a follow if you don't follow. All right, thank you, Lee. Let's have a look at the next two. Uh, so, Lee, why don't you talk us through both of these ones, Lee? So, um, Bitter Duty and our good friend, Tom. Um, so, you, you sent me the pictures for these, didn't you? Because I was making the PowerPoint. Yeah. And you sent me the picture of this uh, um, tyrant, and instantly I was like, oh, my God, I want to do, <laughs> I want to do a whole force of Iron Warriors. Yeah. Um, so, I think yeah. this one again, a bit like the Alpha Legion. It just goes to show, like it's, it, uh, and I mean, no offense in it, but it's just a real simple scheme, isn't it? I mean, yeah. he hasn't even picked out any of the kind of uh, uh, bits of the armor. It's literally pretty much silver, black, and yellow. But it yeah. just yeah. fucking works, doesn't it? Especially yeah. for Iron Warriors, that they yeah. just look so good, even with a real basic scheme. It fits the fluff, doesn't it? So, yeah. I mean, I love this. Like, and it, I, I can really see me at some point doing an, an Iron Warriors like ally detachment because they just look so fucking good. Yeah, that of course. Cool. Um, so yeah, really good job. Like I say, like just simple but effective, uh, yeah. which is fucking ideal, really, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Tom Sargent, I think. I have more pictures of this tank on my phone than I have pictures of my children. <laughs> You've got more now. He started painting the tracks. <laughs> Fuck it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a strange scheme for Space Wolves, isn't it? But I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So well, co the context of that, which is that Tom, about a month ago, started some Space Wolves. I really went balls deep into it. Uh, sacked it off the moment he started dabbling around with Iron iron Hands and started playing with uh, playing with Harry at the doubles. And now he's gone full tilt into um, uh, into into Iron Hands. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, to be fair, I think this is probably some of the best work he's done. I agree. Yeah. I, um, I don't think he's finished the tracks in this picture, has he? I think this is still a bit of a win. Yeah. We've got yeah. some photos of the tracks on our phones. I'm sure we have, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, fucking top job. Like, I mean, Gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, 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 it just looks awesome. Like, well, I think, um, <clears throat> I think for me, one of the things that stands out, I, th I said this to Tom the other day, so I only repeat myself to you guys, but um, the <clears throat> it's really cool to see different schemes. Mm. I haven't seen like I've I've played around with some color shift ones, and Stu Mack has done a lot of color shift work. If you have a look at Will's um army, um, but I haven't seen this kind of iteration mm. of anything to kind of to do with color shift work and it's just a bit different bit interesting for the iron hands i think iron hands despite being kind of black and fluff there's loads of variations you can do on them and it's cool to see a different variation on them i think and shout out to you know this kratos as being the second best painted kratos of the doubles troubles bit. absolutely I, was it the uh, second second only or was there a third kratos in there as well in the, into the mix i'm not sure I'm not sure uh, but... okay no that's yeah He's, he did a great job it's one of it's some Gorgeous, of it's yeah. Fantastic work. Um, right, let's have a look at the next two. 
So, um, yeah, so we thought we'd choose some Imperial Fists as it's an Imperial Fish uh, show today. Uh, so we've got Six of Forge. So as you all know, that Rich is a, a massive heresy enthusiast with, I think, lots of different forces, but I think his biggest force is um, uh, kind of Imperial Fists. And he's been kind of plowing away a large, what I can only describe as an army, but I think it's just a supplement to his um, to his uh, kind of current force at the I moment. Think it's sort of repaint. Of, it's, a, it's just a, a, an yeah. overall repaint, is it? Okay, so it, it looks really, really good. And this Praetor, I think, is 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 just awesome. And I think you can see the the effort that he's gone to with the shield. You know, we've got the edge highlights on the um on the on the gold. You can see a bit of shading on the gold as well. Um, and the laurels picked out. I, I think he's done an amazing job with this, and I think he's done a really, really good job. And I think he should be really um really proud of this one. And then that takes us over to uh, Creaky Bay Studio. So I'm assuming because it's a studio, it's a commission painting studio, but it might, it might not be. Um, but this guy's created some absolutely fantastic, really battered, weathered um, uh, Imperial Fist. I think he did a Kratos as well. Um, and he, to be fair, even though the one at the back is the old Plastic Dread, he's not was, made it look half bad, actually. I was, I was literally going to say, if you can make the old Plastic Dread look good, you, you're doing something right, aren't yeah, you? It, it, Gingerbread Dread. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks um, it, it, like really, really cool. I think the bases are, are uh, absolutely yeah. awesome, yeah. Um, but really nice to see kind of, I think, Yellow is one of those colours that look great, really heavily weathered. And I think this is just a great example. So if you don't follow Sigismund Forge or Creepbone Studio, make sure you do. Let's have a look at the next ones, please, Lee. Right, Harry. How, have you, Harry, have you seen these ones? Uh, Oof, I have. Yeah. Yes. So do you want to talk about, do you want to talk about this one? I mean, I can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I know this is a, a work in progress shot that he's, he's put up. Um, and with a lot of other Dark Angels bits and pieces, but yeah. this is definitely the centerpiece, isn't it? Do you, um, do you know much about the 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 guy who painted this, Harry? And not. I've only recently looked at him on on Instagram. I think it was after he, he won. Was he won. Um, the, did you see the uh, uh, Golden Demon, the Russ and? Um, Okay. Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. the, that's well, the that, same guy who painted this. That probably explains why it's quite decent painting. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, pretty, it's pretty good. It's 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 so dark angels, but it's also so different. I think it's yeah. it's a red that you'd normally see on blood angels or something. Yeah. Normally, you see a very, very, very dark, yeah, you know, highlight from black, red on these dark angels, but that just looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And it's quite a lot of red, and then you've got like the spot colors around the around the Havoc launcher and bits and pieces. Um, yeah, it's just just fantastic. And all the, the dust effects underneath the, the assault ramp. And the yeah, and yeah, that looks great, actually. And, um, all, just, and then just the, on that picture on the right, that, all that micro detailing gives you that sense that it's just been ploughing through like rad storms and yeah and yeah yeah, yeah so, it looks it looks amazing yeah worth a follow if you don't he's, he's criminally underfollowed this guy as well but um, mm. i i'd not followed him this week too i think oh, I I had, until, I, until i'd seen this i i added the picture on the right originally i just put the picture the, the main picture of of the spartan but you couldn't actually see the fucking insane detail that he's 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 done for the weathering so i ended up putting that picture on the right. I think the one on the left is the finished article. The one on the right is the whip. I yeah. could be wrong. Yeah. I think right. Um, but I mean, it's just insane, isn't it? Like just the fucking scratching on that. Just painting that alone would make me want to stick fucking <laughs> pins in my eyes. <laughs> like shit the bed. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah, awesome. Cool. Let's have a look at the next one. I'm not sure this is the next one. I think, one that I think that's it. Awesome. I think I think we're into ah. So we have an awful lot to get through. So we will whiz, uh, whiz through these because <coughs> so much released since our last show. And we, we only did a show two weeks ago. So um, this is insane. So Harry, uh, what's your thought on the Death Guard upgrades here? I would say these are the second best heads they've released so far. What were the first best? I think the White Scars ones Ooh. because they're so um, versatile across other yeah. box six. Okay, yeah. yeah. But these are, they pick up, off the older heads that we got, which people mm -hmm. didn't really use because they were kind of like half bold weird heads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think these tie nicely into some of the heads we see on the Death Guard kits, yeah. the 40k kits. Yeah. I, I think I think they're just fantastic. I think the bare head's okay, 
normally we see the bare head being excellent. I think it's, I think it's all right. Uh, but I think the helmeted heads are just better. And I think they could suit any Legion. Even in, I'd, I'd like to see them with all the spikes cut off and add it to something like uh, Iron Warriors. Um, yeah. I think that's a yeah. really good point, actually. I, I, I'm not such a fan of like the goggles, the kind of ski goggles, uh, okay. they've got the, all the shades, I think. Um, the sort of they remind me of somebody who used to wear like Oakleys in the early noughties, I think. Um, but, um, the it, it's really interesting. So, if you look back at the Visions of Heresy book as well, you have quite a lot of like Sons of Horus with these pointy kind of yeah. white helmets, some of the like Horus's kind of Chthonian personal guard had them so i think you're probably right you could combine them together mm. i think the um the head for a siege break of the bare head for a siege break or more attack is oh yeah that's going to be used a lot i think so that be, yeah awesome. attack, uh, uh, lee what's your thoughts on these i really like these i like the way that it's come kind of full circle so like harry mentioned the 40k death guard models yeah which are obviously like mark free but for 40k and then they they used helmets like these but kind of nerglified helmets yeah. like these and now they've made 30k helmets based off the helmets that were yeah, made yeah. 40k death guy helmets so yeah. i really like the way they've come back with that yeah. yeah i really like these i i would put these as my second favorite after the iron warrior helmet interesting okay. <laughs> no, no, no. these are clearly a popular popular choice then actually yeah and I, yeah. again great shout with the murray tap bare head i think that's yeah. That's almost yeah. perfect. And I like the shoulder pads as well. I know we kind of... Yeah, they're right. Yeah, they're, they're not bad at all. Actually. I wouldn't do them white. I would do them a dark gold bronze Yeah, for the, the symbol. and Some but... nice verdigree on it. Right? Oh, but... yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's yeah. naughty. Yeah, like um, that. yeah. But yeah, I really like them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, a successful choice. Certainly better than the Space Wars helmets. Right, no, let's have a look at the... Uh, anything. You could have literally <laughs> put it in your hands and clapped and it would have been... <laughs> Even the squat stuff is like, yeah, I'd rather <laughs> play that. <laughs> uh, so um, if you have been living under a rock or in a cave, <laughs> you will um, doubtless have heard that um, Echoes of Eternity was released last week and people have been frantically listening on Audible or reading uh, their, their copies. Uh, but we also got a, a cheeky um, kind of preview of what's to come for the next two books. So I had listened to a, uh, an interview um with Dan Abner ages ago like last year I think um where it was it was a literary um interview completely unrelated to 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 Warhammer but in that he said that the the work he's the book he's currently working on was so big that it was going to need to be split into two and lo and behold it's this book um so I don't think it ever intended to be the last volume um the siege server intended to be two volumes um, but it's turned into two volumes, which is great because it's just more content for us to to read and stretches out um, the siege of uh, siege of terror by somebody who wrote, uh, I think, the best universally acknowledged as the, one of the best books with, within the series. Um, and it feels only right that Dan finishes uh, it, considering he started with with Horace Rising. Um, my, uh, I'm just going to make a quick prediction. So if you've got any predictions about this one, uh, then please write them in. But I, um, I suspect this first volume, we will actually see um, Horace and the Emperor slug it out in this. I think that um, in that first volume, or at least in that first volume, we will see uh, the, the the end will be that they will transport onto the Vengeful Spirit. Yeah. And then volume two will start with the um with the battle between the the two yeah. of them. um i think that'll probably be a, a good place to kind of leave it but i think that um there's a lot to cover now because of the way that echoes of eternity was done and because of the way that it looked at kind of um a very very small number of characters i think that dan has a lot of loose ends to kind of tie up over the entirety of the of the series as well as the siege of uh, terror ones how are you all halfway through echoes of eternity at the moment i am yes i and i i struggle to find how there's going to be two more books because terror <laughs> seems to be completely <laughs> right. utterly... yeah fuck it's right. like yeah the solo war book it was like oh they're on terror and then yeah. it's just eight books or whatever of terror just being yeah destroyed yeah. so i'm intrigued um to see but like you said i think there's going to be a lot of lots of little storylines lots of yeah. tying up um and i kind of agree with you because i was thinking this the day that it would be strange to start with what's probably the most momentous point in the heresy, which is yeah. Horus versus the Emperor. So it would it would maybe come up towards the end of volume one. Yeah. 
and then volume two will just be it's up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Blood Angels getting angry and things. And all, and yeah, all that. yeah, um, yeah. That's good so yes, I'm excited to finish Echoes of Eternity, see where that, that, that um, lifts off from. Yeah. Um, but I think this is just going to be, yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic. And I think um, it'll be interesting to see whether they continue with a scouring uh, series after this, I think. <laughs> yeah, or if they go back and visit other things. It's, it's interesting yeah. to know. Where's it's clearly a cash cow, though. People absolutely love it. So I think that they'd be silly not to, but whether the authors themselves have the energy to continue, because there's some, that I think with the Siege of Terror, probably mentally, there's some sort of finality and whether they've got, yeah, there's just the stamina to continue with a series that looks like that or not, or whether they get new authors in to have a look at um, looking at doing the scouring, yeah. I think probably would be a, a good show. We've, we've seen them. There's got to be an element of burnout, hasn't there? Oh, like, I've, I've been going back and reading some of the first books and, like, they're so much better than the Siege of Terror books. Like, <laughs> I just think they I, they just are, like, I just... Mm. When you've been writing the same stuff for, like, 10... Well, what is it, like, 15 years or yeah, something it's, stupid? Yeah. Yeah, it's been... Like, that's going to have an impact on your... How much motivation you have, isn't it? Surely. Like... I, I think so. I think so, too. Yeah, I think that... Um, there are some really, really standout books within the Heresy series, and some standout books within the Siege of Siege Terror series. But yeah. it feels that yeah, the, the, sort of these guys are writing to 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 kind of just get to well, not just to get to the end. You know, they want to get out right, but the you know this is it feels like there's a full stop at the end of this one. But it'll be interesting to see perhaps a new team do the scouring. I think, but maybe yeah. some authors or younger authors. I, I think I'd be- like to see stuff about the unification as well. Oh but- man. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd absolutely love that. Yeah. That'd well, I was be- like reading, reading the Sigismund book and the, you know, the start of the Sigismund book and it's talking about, you know, it's just post unification and it's talking about all the barbaric tribes and things around Terra. Yeah. Like, this is such a cool bit of yeah. uh, history that would just be fantastic. Yeah. You know, introducing Thunder Warriors as actual characters. <laughs> yeah. That would be wicked. Um, yeah. Because in the Valdor book, like the okay, short awesome. short Valdor story, like they have an awesome badass, like pr- mm. like a Thunder Warrior Primarch, basically, who's who's really yeah, cool yeah, character, yeah. I think. So yeah. Awesome. Right, let's have a look at the uh, next lot because we've got a fair amount of stuff to get through. So this was a completely, for me, unexpected uh, yep. release. Uh, we had a bit of a chat at the start of the, the show or before we, we came on, um, which I think Lee said. Well, maybe maybe Harry. It feels quite necromundary, um, but yeah. it's uh, but it's uh, essentially a, an assassin as part of like I, I guess uh, kind of a mechanicum assassin. I guess is the best way to kind of like describe it, really. But it's somebody who um, I guess deals with kind of taking down infrastructure rather than kind of like individual kind of like yeah. But, these, um, these are the hackers, aren't they? These are uh, these, they they hack into like the new sphere or whatever the fuck it is, and and can get your data they have one in nemesis is it yes that's right yeah 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 he's like the nerd basically he's the boring one that doesn't kill <laughs> yeah a t- in all like uh heist movies there's always a hacker right and yeah there's the guy in this in his beanie in his laptop in the back yeah, of the minute it, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is the, the equivalent but i think that it is really it's remarkable definitely. how um uh how necromunda it feels it's interesting that anuj posted on on after this was released on forge he was like yeah he just broke finally or something so this suggests that this has been around or in the works for quite some time but is only now being um or released. he had no idea and he just likes to make people think that he's <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that is not the case uh, and then we got some reference cards as well i I have no interest in reference cards, but the lads tell me this has got stuff like psychic powers and things like that. So yeah. gaming for your convenience. Um so this is the sort of thing that I would actually get because I'm fucking terrible at remembering anything. So if I can just have it on a card in front of me. Yeah, and psychic powers are great for the cards. Yeah, I think it's got the reaction. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be a reprint of the when the release age darkness box for the pre-orders from Games Workshop you got a little pack of reaction cards right and i just i think nobody gave a shit about them yeah um so i think it's probably those cards reprinted and they've added okay. like you yeah. said there's warlord traits and psychic powers and things in like this oh that'd be quite um yeah i'm um, sure that'd be quite quite the only time reference cards right. become pointless is when they you get a fuck and then it just changes yes. and it's sharp yeah i am i'm a big fan of reference cards personally because it just helps me i can remember things that I just forget otherwise so yeah 
Perfect for those with low IQ. Got it. Excellent. Right, next, uh, ne <laughs> next, uh, <laughs> next, uh, early onset of dementia. <laughs> uh, these are for you. Excellent. Uh, and then the big one, the biggie that I think was at the start of this week, perhaps, was the Libra Imperium. So um, mm. if you have been waiting uh, for your uh, Talents of the Emperor, your um, Solar Auxilia, or your, what was the third one? I'm sure there's a third one. There's a silence. And yeah. the Assassins will be the Assassins. And the Assassin Assassins phase as well. Um, then this is the one for you. Now, the Assassins weren't officially part of the version one rule set, I don't think. No, we, we were used to them being in Mournival and things, That's and a lot of people saying, I'll oh, just bring Assassins and just chuck exactly in the. Right. Chuck in but they weren't, they, they, weren't, they, weren't, they weren't official. I'm assuming as well, you can't bring an army of Assassins. I assume that they'll fill some sort of like allied detachment in and of themselves, or they'll be kind of fill your HQ. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be. Agents of the Imperium, isn't it? So it'll be a a, a, a non-compulsory HQ or a least choice or, or something. Um, I, I was surprised that we didn't see Loken and Garrow in this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, not Loken, sorry. Uh, Tylus Rubio. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting that one. I yeah. So we will be interested what this looks like. And I think um, if we think that. Uh, um, Contempt of Dreadnoughts are currently bad. Just wait until we see some Custodes Contempt of Dreadnoughts. Oh, they're gonna be yeah. they're gonna be, they won't be in talents, but they'll be fucking oh. mental. And I have absolutely no doubt. I tell them on, I think, yeah, you're going to be limited It'll, Yeah, on how many you can You take. still have your Custodes. Yeah, do you? Yeah. I've still yeah. lint in his eye. Look at the <laughs> tray. <laughs> yes, I do. You got, you got, I think, um, I don't hard. know about other scenes across the world, but in the UK scene, every, Every Talons player was always matched up with every Demons player because they were the only ones who could <laughs> yeah. take them on. So, yeah, they take the hit, right? Um, let's have a look at some of the some of the rules. So I'll do the uh, Custodes one as a Custodes uh, fanboy. So um, we we got a, a little glimpse of um, what is to come with each of the each of the forces. So um, the Talons or the Custodes, it doesn't say specifically here which one it is. Um, there are things called nemesis units, which are kind of like high priority targets for the for the Legio Custodes, and you get some additional rules if you take um, if you take the custodian. So a nemesis unit is defined as an any enemy unit that fulfills at least one of the following conditions. The unit includes one or more models with at least one of the following unit types: Primarchs, Dreadnoughts, Monstrous, Reinforced, Bombard, Demon, Corrupted, Super Heavies, Unique, or Knight. The majority of models in the unit have a value of five or more in any of the following characteristics, uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill, wounds or initiative, and the unit includes any enemy warlord. Now, what that gives you is if you're playing Custodes, it's like plus one attack, plus one yeah, screen, didn't plus, it. Sorry, um, it, and uh, plus one movement when charging them as well. So you get a range of buffs if you're going against some of these units. So they don't really care about the lesser units. They're sort of pathetic uh, grunts they're not interested in. So you really need to think if you're going against Custodes, how you're going to protect um, some of your kind of key priority uh units and your elite units as well by the looks of things because you they will get some additional buffs the other one is that it hits uh, no worse than on a four up so if you're going against the prime arc your custodians will just hit them on a four up right or, well there was something i wanted to say on that oh yeah this, go for this it, is yeah. what came out yeah because there it says the unit um so your nemesis units are a unit with at least one of the following unit types units subtypes prime arcs. and then later on they said oh yeah you can't hit on anything worse than four plus, unless you're fighting a prime arc, and everyone said, "Oh, you don't read your own rules." But uh, what I think that's going to be is that if you're fighting a unit with prime arc in it, yeah, the York associates will hit the unit on a four right. plus. Okay. Let's, let's say you're fighting. But if you're fighting in a challenge, then it will be. It'll... But then, if you're fighting in a challenge against the prime arc, then you'll be back to hit on the five plus. I think that's what that means. But a lot of people seem to have. That'll be, that would be that so only right. It'll be really interesting to see because I think that the community on the on the whole um uh felt that the first iteration of custodies was really difficult to deal with. The second issue iterations was was difficult to deal with, but, but wasn't as bad. But I put that down to the plus one strength, plus one toughness. Um so it'll be interesting yeah. that they've maintained that um and see what their war gear options are. I, I suspect that it will still be quite strong but i wonder if there'll be some restrictions around dreadnoughts and, and things like that some of their better, better units as long as they're put their, their cost is accordingly right? correct. I mean, yeah they, absolutely. They, they should be absolutely murderous but you should only really have maybe 20 on the board yeah tanks and things. yeah so. absolutely uh harry do you want to read uh the tertio rule to us Can i just say one thing oh yeah sure go for it mate. Yeah. say one thing about this nemesis so i really like the idea of it um because like they've seen something like target priority they go fucking batshit the thing I really don't like about this, as, as a word bearers player, 
my entire army is corrupted. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, that feels <laughs> right. Yeah, get rid of the arch heretic. That's what you get to be fair. Oh, I'm so. fucked. Literally, yeah. I will never play yeah. Custodes first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's really tough, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really, really, really going to struggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harry, go for the tertiary rule. So this is for the solar auxilia in particular, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is for the solar auxilia, which we are hoping um, is a more expanded list than what we had before, because it's quite a two-dimensional two list before, I think. Even though I had lots of options, it was infantry or, or tanks. So tertios before were the way that you took units. So you, you took a tertio as a troop's choice, and then you filled it out almost like a platoon structure, like in the old guard. Um, additions but now it seems to be um almost like an empire state troops rule of old so when a reaction is declared for a unit this rule that allows to make a shooting attack or move and then all units in the same tertiary can also do the same thing as long as they're within three inches of each other so you know you've got your las rifle sections if you know you've got one in the middle and two next to it and someone shoots that one in the middle they right. all shoot back um and what it doesn't say here is in the article, it did talk about how uh, oh, space marines will think think twice before shooting a Lehman Rush strike squadron, and they can they can use this. So that makes me think that we're going to see fast attack strike squadron, you know, Lehman Rush tertios. We're going to see heavy support tertios. So maybe you'll be able to take some, you know, Lehman Rushes and Carnadons and things in one tertio, um, and that that'll be really really cool. So hopefully. We, we get quite you know this is a cool rule but it's, it's kind of also hinted at quite an expansive list change yeah that's really interesting yeah you pulled out a lot of uh deductive uh yeah uh, skills there that'll be interesting to see what they do with that because i've got a small solar orgs um course but they clearly kind of want you to take a lot within a within a tertio so there's lots of bodies on the board i think one of my big things about the solar orcs is that they desperately need a plastic kit it's prohibitively expensive the forge rod um forge rod kits i think uh just for the for the dudes alone so hopefully we'll get to see a plastic kit of these and they've, yeah. they've got rid of a lot of the uh yeah uh, solar orcs line anyways haven't they yeah. like all the rapiers have gone um yeah, yeah pe people are really into that saying that oh well we're getting plastic rapiers as part of mm. those marine kits so that means that there'll be a sprue that is the rapier and then you have mm. three models in addition to that. Or just a so, small solar orgs list. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> there's already people saying that the, the, the photo of this article, mm. the banner in, in the background looks different or something. Oh, oh I'll have to have a look at that. Ooh, I yeah. looked, I I'll take a look at that in the break. Same, but, um, Harry's not convinced. Well, hey, I don't um, know, but... I okay, think it's well, such an amazing there's quite, a lot to, there's quite a lot to mull over there. Thank you so much for that, Harry. Uh, Lee, let's go for you got the longest one. So um, uh, you've got the reading age of a sort of a five year old. So um, <laughs> uh, um, because Assassin's I kind of day, lost, lost track with this one. So go for it. Divisio Assassinorum Advanced Reaction Tactical Displacement. This advanced reaction may be made during the shooting phase. Whenever an enemy unit targets a unit that is composed entirely of models with the assassin unit subtype with a shooting attack, the reacting unit may immediately move a distance in inches up to twice the majority initiative characteristic of the reacting unit. This move may be made in any direction and ignores all terrain or other effects that would limit or modify the distance right. move, including allowing models in the reacting unit to move across impassable terrain. Oh, right. As long as the final position of all models in the reacting unit are at least one inch away from any enemy model and not within an area of impassable terrain. Uh, if after moving any models in the reacting unit are positioned out of range or line of sight of the unit that caused the reaction, that unit may not select another target for the shooting attack that triggered the reaction and no right. dice are rolled. Weapons with a get hot special rule do not need to roll to see if the weapon gets hot. And weapons with a one use special rule are not considered to have been expanded. So that's really good, isn't it? That's really good. And I really like how it specifically says basically, if you choose to use if you choose to shoot at this assassin and then they mm. and then they choose use this reaction, you've basically fucked off your um your your reaction for that phase, right? I think that's really, really clear, crystal clear. I think that's really great. This is um very very similar in fact pretty much the same apart from the it's 12 for yeah, alpha yeah. Legion. this is the same as alpha legion trait and that has already been proved to be a very 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 powerful but yeah isn't, isn't the alpha legion one that that unit that was shooting can then shoot something else no so it just can't shoot yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, i am um, i would like to 
I would the other thing I'd like to know is whether you can take like a unit of assassins within. I was thinking like, this, yeah. slot as well because the way I know it says assassin unit subtype, which just suggests you've got one on the board, but it might be that you can take a small clade of assassins, like five in a five in a unit, kind of like hopping around doing doing different stuff. So it'll be Brilliant. really cool to see um uh what what happens with that i think you'll see a lot of assassins um i'm a bit um i'm a bit sad panda that they, they said in the article that the assassins are essentially loyalist aren't they it's it's a loyalist thing yeah. i really hope we see some rules for traitor assassins mm-hmm. yeah, I, some sort of demon assassin things right? yeah I, I think a lot of people I've been reading into that with this being the I don't and, and it's why I'm a bit confused by the Libra Imperium because you obviously have solo auxiliary traitor yeah. forces right yeah I mean, it's all in the books you know the sub nine rounds and things yeah um, and you know mm-hmm. they will be they will be traitor uh, aligned assassins and why I, I say is you know we've got the loyalist Astartes book and that's got traitor uh, warlord traits and things of like it so. Yes, I guess this is a loyalist book, but I, I'm hoping to see that we'll, we'll see some kind of you know, traits and warlord traits and things that, that will swing some of these forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I put a thing up on our little chat group, just taking the piss. But it is that I feel like they've, um, I feel like they've done it a bit weird because it, it literally says the forces of the emperor on the book, and then the yeah. article is very much like loyalist forces loyalist forces dawn brought back the solar auxiliary to protect the solar region and it's all talking about loyalists so i could see how you could read into it that literally the solar ogs are just going to be loyalist but mm. it's funny that because then when you read the rule book they've said some things in the rule book that yeah. obviously talk about oh actually the a bit like they would do mark six like oh the whole everyone used Mark Six in the rule. Yeah. They kind of talk about Solox Zealous. Like, oh, Solox Zealous everywhere. Use it so, everywhere, please. Yeah. I think it's the classic example of um, the Warhammer community know fuck all about what they're posting. They're just being told to post something. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whoever wrote that clearly knows fuck all about heresy. And it, is- it's quite a niche. I mean, Solar Orcs is quite a niche as well within, yeah, yeah. within a niche uh, within yeah. a niche uh, thing. So it yeah. would be interesting how that one uh, plays out. But I think that um, variation in army types now beyond the legions, uh, I think is, is, is starting to hot up, right? Like those people who've been waiting to play, um, it, it's well, really exciting. I have a. I have seen some comments of, and I think people have forgotten what they initially put out right at the start when they were talking about releases. Um, I think it's on a roadmap um, article they put out, and they did say that there's a cult warp cults and militia PDF coming. So right. I think people are seeing this and going, "Oh, we're not getting militia now." Like there is a militia PDF coming. This isn't the militia. This is Solar Ogs. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the only the thing I would the only thing I would take from that is that I reckon that this Solar List is going to be a, a lot more expansive and include more variation, and the Militia List will maybe be a little bit shrunk down. So yeah, what we'll, what we'll see is we'll see more people with unconventional solar armies playing them as solar exams. Oh, I see. I oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, that, that's quite interesting, actually, because that because in my head, the solar auxiliary was always something very, very specific, which yeah. was a well-trained elite uh, part of the Imperial Army, whereas the militia kind of fell under the Imperial Army as well as else. the CDF forces as well. Yeah. Um, I think this book's going to include quite a few bits for people to say, this is my Talon solar auxiliary army. Obviously, they do not have Saturnine pattern, void armor, they have, etc. And I think this book's made. Okay, so we, we actually might see some changing of the law around the solar auxiliary and what exactly it might be. I, th- I think so. I think they're going it's to interesting. expand I, it. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be like that. And I okay. think that's why they've put it in with the custodies and the sisters of silence. I think it's yeah. going to be a fairly small. This is solar ox elite. And well, it won't be that big. Well, but we don't well, have long to wait. We'll get Harry back on the show when it drops, and then because uh, Harry's a key right. right. in the You can get me on when the militia right, yeah, PDF comes right. out. <laughs> yeah, okay. When the militia <laughs> PDF starts coming and rage for half an hour, <laughs> it's right. right. a throw on my models. Or that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, right. Let's have a look at the next thing because just, um, film, just film Harry for an hour throwing <laughs> each individual model of his army. At the wall. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Oh, here we go. So this is officially a 40k release. However, we uh, definitely cool. thought it was uh, worth putting in because partly because the Siege of Terror just dropped, um, uh, and the most recent book, which is basically just a world eaters uh, homage. Um, but these are absolutely awesome kits that I think are worthy of being used in a Horus Heresy force. I think you're perfectly okay to use these as they are within a force. I, I think you get might get a few people who might say, take off the, the corn um, elements of it, um, but they there are some absolutely awesome upgrade kits. Um, the heads look fantastic, way better than some of the ones that we got from Forge oh, about 10 years ago. Um, they look brilliant. The chain axes look absolutely brutal and the heads look awesome. And it does look to me like the the very bottom one. They almost look like cataphracty um, shoulder plates, but I, I don't know if they are or not. But... No, they're not. They're, they have released pictures. They're, they're, they're just funky shoulder pads. Oh, okay. Just yeah. I, I thought they'd be like, you know, the Rampages kit where you get like an yeah. on bare arm. Oh, okay, and right, and you can just pop pop it over that. Okay, yeah. so it's like gladiatorial kind of like uh, yeah. Yeah, kind yeah, of exactly. style of armor. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, they they are absolutely awesome looking kits. Loads of kind of like um, mobility within the kits as well. I suspect, like all current GW kits, there'll be some room for kind of like conversion um, mm -hmm. and variation. But it looks like the poses are pretty kind of set um, yeah but it's similar they, to the chaos marine kit won't it won't yeah actually. i think yeah. so um but they they look absolutely fantastic so i think that you know with a mark four or a mark five um or a mark six show like um backpack change it will look a bit more 30k or you know do whatever you want but these are awesome kits that i definitely think people can use in horror uh right let's have a look at the the next one please so it was Nova. So Nova was last week. If you stayed up, you will have seen this. There was lots of speculation about what might be released. I was hoping for a bit more of an expansive um, kind of um, sort of phase two or phase three. This is what you're getting next year in Horus Heresy. But in fact, we got this. So um, uh, this is a resin model. It's not plastic. It's it's going to be a Forge World, uh, Forge World model. Um, and it looks like that all the Primarchs are going to get their uh, Primark models updated for a uh, kind of a peak peak heresy, kind of what they were like in, in Horus Heresy. So Angron is the, the classic one. So Angron needs a new model. He looks like he's going to get a plastic model. Whether they'll do a resin version of him or not, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but they're starting with Lupercal. Um, and Lee, what's your thoughts on this one? I, uh, I think this is awesome. I think it's absolutely awesome. I think it's fucking... I, I mean, I've heard people moaning about different things of it, but yeah, I, I, I like the pose. Um, we were talking about, before we start recording, didn't we, about the base? Um, and uh, it would be nice if they, so they won't do it, but it'd be nice if they sold it as an option without the base, because I think you'd probably save yourself a hundred quid just not having that fucking uh, base I, on yeah. it. Uh, I think yeah. it, it looks bigger. Like, I think this... Loop cow looks bigger than the previous model. And yeah, I don't know if it's an 80 mil base or a 60 mil. If it's 80 mil, it's gonna be he's gonna be fucking huge. This guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean there's not much else to say really. I, I think it's fucking awesome. I really like the model. I'm not bothered that he's got a tube going up his nose. Um it's with the artwork, right? Tube's great. Yeah. Uh I <laughs> would I have preferred it to have been plastic? I guess yeah, because then I would have brought one. Like I won't buy this because I will never use it, and it's yeah. probably going to be like two hundred quid. Um, so it's a shame, but I mean, I'm not that bothered. But I'm not going to buy it. But I mean, yeah, it's a fucking awesome model, isn't it? I, I mean, yeah, I, I really like it. A swinging really. a, a swinging a hit with it, uh, Harry. What's your thoughts on uh, this guy? I think yeah, just absolutely mega. Um, just the details on how it's translated so nicely from the original horror sculpt yeah it's just pretty much the same but with all these extra little details you know all yeah. little trims become a little bit more pointy and chaos -y. yeah some heads there he's got his tube up his nose um i think the base isn't as big a problem as i think there's something to be said about the painting of that base because yeah. it's that bone and the green i think it's really detracting yeah but i think if you painted that base just like with powders and you know how it's described in the seizure terror where everything's just gray yeah. and just dusty yeah. i think it would look really quite cool and menacing and you could even do some you know smoldering osl down there and things yeah um and i think yeah. 
we'll see that base and people go, oh, actually, this base is fucking awesome. Yeah, um, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think that the, we're not used to seeing something quite this chaotic in terms of basing for, from, from Forge World. Usually it's a dead marine or two. And then um, because I, in some ways it, it's quite de- detracting from the overall model, I think. But as you say, I think it's probably the paint job. The the final thing I'll say on this and is that and the, we may be getting new solar sagolps is that on the corner on the left hand side there is a solar auxilia banner there so if you haven't seen that that, that's the sign of the solar orcs so it'll be i'm curious to see whether like that is part of that's what i was talking about earlier that's the banner that people are saying got it so and i think that that might well be Mm -hmm. basically like they when they were 3d printing this they were like oh well we'll just take this from this sculpt that we already have and yeah. we'll just pop it why have they made that right it's the same yeah. when we saw argo tull holding that mark tomb marine and we're still exactly mark right yeah. Coming. yeah and that is pretty much what is in the cupola on the yeah. new yeah. vehicle accessory spirit exactly right yeah so, so i think this is a hint of uh things to uh things to come but it's an absolutely awesome model really popular um and done by sam uh egan i think uh who did the the original forge world uh <laughs> sculpts but i think this is um a 3d kind of design version of it but he's done an absolutely awesome job the face on it is just so good like the head is so so one quick question because mm. this is um horus ascended isn't it which we've got rules for yeah do you think we will get rules for demon primarchs yeah i think we'll i think we'll see a fulgrim so. a demon fulgrim definitely yeah and do you think they will use the 40k models. Yeah. So uh, I, I, <laughs> so Angron is like the perfect example of that. So I would be surprised if they did another resin Angron model, yeah. but I, 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 if it did come out, I'll be like, oh, okay, well, fair enough. But I, I think the model is so good. Um, and it would just be easy to transport the rules over to do it 30k, 40k. Uh, I think that they probably will. I mean, like, if you look at like a Sakaran, there's like 40k rules for a Sakaran, 30k rules for it. Like, why not just apply Same that thing. to the, to, yeah. to the time marks? And, and there and- are some things done in resin. I just, yeah, it like Cabanda's the one that breaks the rule where it's just it's an insane model to make in resin. But just if you can make it in plastic, just do it. It's just yeah. much easier, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one quick quote just for you guys. Mm. With this model release, which a lot of people argue is the best Horus we have now, do you think we'll see people that just have this model and will use it as a regular Horus as well as Horus Ascended? Yeah, I I suspect so. Yeah, I think that... um, uh, I don't think the old Horus model looks dated. I still think it looks good. But I just just think that... um, I think the other one is that this is most people play at the peak of Horus Heresy, be it the yeah. Secret Terror or kind of like, up for him, it would be after Moloch. So, and I think that um, when you kind of think about that, I think this is probably more in keeping with what people's versions of the Sons of Horus kind of Primark, uh, a Horus Primark will be. So I think that this will be used as a normal and an Ascended. And I, I would be perfectly okay with that. I think yeah. I, it'll be, I, I wouldn't surprise me if in, like once this was released, they'll eventually <laughs> kind of fade out the previous Horus model. Yeah, uh, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, it depends yeah. on the difference, I guess, as well yeah. for some people. I, I could see the old Primarchs going to, um, I can't think what they call it, but you know when they like release models for a short period of time? Yeah, made to order. Yeah. 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 I, I think the, pro- the problem is with the the older Primarchs, especially ones like Angron and Horus, is that the, the casting on them just isn't as good as what the newer stuff is because it's 3D printed. Because you can, the casts are going, there's mold lines on it. Yeah. Sometimes you get bits of the actual mold in the model where you got to flick it out, you know. And so I think that um and Angron's tiny as well, isn't he really? Yeah, Angron's, yeah. Angron's a mini, mini Team man. Mini. Yeah, exactly. Um, awesome. Right, let's have a look at the next thing. I think this is one of the last ones. So we're going to move on after the break. We are going to move on to uh Imperial Fist and we're going to be taking a deep dive into their Legion. We are going to have a look at their uh law, although I'm sure it will kind of come up. What we're really going to do is go through the Liber Astartes book and go through each of the units one by one. We're going to talk about our experiences, mine and Harry's experiences of uh of those units uh if we run them, and we're going to talk about combinations that might win you uh some games, as well as some of the weaknesses, not that the Imperial Fists have uh have <laughs> And then uh, Lee's going to tell us how bullshit Imperial fists uh, for fists are throughout the uh, next uh, hour or two. Uh, so join us uh, after the break. Yep. 
Right, welcome uh, back. So we are going to take a deep dive into the Imperial Fist rules. I think that, um, so one of the big things I'd say about the Imperial Fist is that because Games Workshop have used them as the poster boys on their box art, I think that as a result of that, they seem a really, really popular legion at the moment. But I think that their popularity is also linked to how fleshed out they feel. Um, they've got a number of different units. They've got l quite a few special characters, more so than uh, the Ultramarines uh, certainly have. Um, and as a result of that, they feel like quite a flavorful um uh flowful legion um and i think personally they've got some of the the one of the best legion rules in the game we will take a look at that in a, in a moment uh harry what's your initial kind of impressions just before we get started on imperial fist what's your kind of thoughts on them uh, uh, at the moment and where they stand uh it's too many of them isn't there really too many too many guarding no there. i think like you say they they are the ultramarines of 30k I yeah. think, especially now, I think there was Word as, as well. I think um, it's an attractive paint scheme. They're in every single fucking book. Um, they've always had really solid rules. And, and like I say, now, they feel like one of the most complete legions. Even when you say that the Sons of Horus are the other poster boy legion, that Sons of Horus still feel a bit gappy and there's maybe some yeah. things that people are struggling with list-wise. Yeah. Imperial Fists feel like it's all there. It's all on the table. They've got the characters. They've got solid rights of war. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a really, really good place for people to start. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, I, yeah, I'd agree with that. Lee, I mean, I'm not sure if you played Imperial Fist in the new um, new iteration, but from the outside looking in, uh, what's your thoughts on Imperial Fist? Oh, I, I would say I have, like, bad feelings about the Imperial Fists at least once a day because <laughs> like if you ignore the rules like they look so fucking good don't yeah. they yellow if you can get the yellow right it's such a good color you can weather the shit out of it you cannot like just looking at the color plates here they look the, the yellow the black you know the red and white helmet ah, just fucking look hot so yeah, yeah. If I, I had more time, I'd yeah. probably do. I'd probably do an Imperial Fists yeah. force if I had more time. But uh, and they're so high profile at the latter stages of the the Horus Heresy and the Siege of Terror as well, which is I think just increase their popularity. I think that the moment a Black Library book drops about a particular legion, then uh, then the the increase in the number of people doing that, yeah. and then we've just had with the Siege of Terror just that uh, sort of like maximum uh, throughout. I think uh, one of, one of the things that does appeal to me with with the the um the the books of imperial fists is they kind of do a bit of everything in the book yeah that's right yeah you know like they're they're in there scrapping they're shooting things they're doing this and that you know if you read like about the white scars they're flying around on the jet bikes and they're generally just flying around on the jet bikes whereas yeah, imperial yeah, fists yeah. Kind of, you've got their terminator forces and so i i think like you say they're just I mean, it comes back to just being a well-rounded force, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. they're a jack of all trades. I think. You could do any force, and it would fit in the fluff. You could do like a, a close combat orientated force, uh, like like I mean, exactly like Harry's done, and and it fits in with the fluff. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, there's lots of lots of different ways to run the the league. Yeah, gives them yeah, and none of them are you know I fucking wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah. I think another good point, um, this is what someone on the local club has talked to me about, why he started playing Imperial Fists. So, oh, well, I've always played um, Crimson Fists. Yeah. And it made me realise that there's so much current, I say current, you know, 40K, yeah. that's deep-rooted in yeah. Imperial Fists. Yeah. You know, even look yeah. at these colour plates. I mean, yeah. you've got the old veteran sergeant symbol from Road Trade on the guy's shield. You've got his red helmet, which is something that carries forward to 40K. You've got the twin mm. axes of the executioners. Yeah. And then that... Yeah, that yeah. and you've got, you've got Sigismund and Black Templar, you've got yeah. Pollux and Crimson Fists. Yeah. So you've got so much yeah. continuity yeah. with Imperial Fists, where and some they've... legions maybe don't have that in, in quite as much detail. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. that long ago that they finished doing the, the Templars, fucking Black Templars kind of release for 40k, was it? Yeah, so yeah, it's still yeah. fairly yeah. fresh. Yeah. And there's some fucking awesome models awesome, and yeah. bits. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, let's take a look at the uh, most important thing, which is the Legion Starties rule. So uh, this is, um, I think, useful 
because it isn't triggered in certain situations, like say, like a Sons of Horus rule is. You just have this as a flat out rule, similar to like we were talking about with the Iron uh, Iron Warriors. It's just a flat rule, uh, and as a result of that, I just think flat rules that you always get are just better. So discipline and resolve models with this special rule gain a bonus of plus one to hit rolls with any auto weapon or bolt weapon as part of any shooting attack, including as part of a reaction. Now, uh, where before it was previously in version one just bolt weapons it's now auto weapons the list of auto weapons is as long as my arm so many things fall under auto weapons now which is that you can really leverage um this rule by just choosing bolt and uh, auto weapons and you would still have a well-rounded list even if you didn't have las cannons in your list for example or volcots in this uh you know auto cannons fall under it the sakar and punisher falls under it uh, a hell of a lot of things fall under it um and i think it's probably worth uh, mentioning uh with this one so uh, if you're forced to snap fire correct me if i'm wrong here harry but if you're forced to snap fire and hitting on sixes uh, if you're using a bolt weapon or an auto weapon you'd actually be hitting on fives with an imperial fist as well is that that yeah. is correct isn't it yeah and that's it, i think that's one of the big things that's a lot better is that plus one to hit to the roll is always so much better than plus one blister skill yeah yeah um that's yeah. so and you know we may get rules in the future and but there may be some things um you know that change that but you know for example uh you know seekers shooting at night time yeah they're, they're still hitting on twos yeah so that's um, that's re- so it mitigates the night night fight um yeah. within 24 as well yeah right? where whereas because night fighting is minus one to hit isn't it that's right within 24 so let's say that it was possible blizzard skill your seekers would go up to blizzard skill six they'd yep. still be hitting on twos because they go yep. down to threes yep. so but there's there's stuff like that where yeah it's such a better rule than last time um, yeah. in terms of that regard and then as you say you've got the more heavy weapons yeah so loads of loads of benefits to this and uh mitigate some of the kind of rules that we've uh, seen cropping up in this edition uh we've got vaults of the phalanx laws of the imperium and sentinels of terror we'll go through each of those bits uh in a moment let's have a look at the next one please uh lee <clears throat> so this advanced reaction is really good it's similar to the space wars one but not quite as good as the space wars one but it certainly helped me out in a number of uh, scenarios and situations uh lee do you want to just read the best defense for us we know the top bit how it's triggered just the best defenses one. yeah uh da, 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 the best defense this advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's movement phase when any enemy unit ends a move within 10 inches and within line of sight of any model with the Legionnaires of Starters Imperial Fist special rule in a unit under the reactive player's control, with that unit making the reaction. The reactive player may declare a charge for the reacting unit against the enemy unit, which triggered this reaction. Once that enemy unit has completed its move... Oh, fucking, I'm losing myself here, sorry. Sorry. The Shout reactive out. player may declare a charge for the reacting unit against the enemy unit, which triggered this reaction. Once that enemy unit has completed its move and is... And as if it were the controlling player's assault phase, with a charge distance in each inches equal to D6 plus the lowest unmodified initiative characteristic of any model in the reacting unit and any charge modifiers the unit has. If the charge is successful, the units are locked in combat and fight in the assault phase as normal. The charging unit better benefiting from any charge bonuses, hammer of wrath, etc. If the charge fails, a uh, no surge move is made. So, Harry, have you used this advanced reaction? I certainly have. Because Do you want this... to talk us through the uh, the pros of this um, yeah. reaction? So, pro number one for an Imperial Fist player, and obviously as an Imperial Fist player, you will be using Sigismund, is that your uh, <laughs> plus two to charge <laughs> stacks with this. So that's really good. So any charge bonus is stacked with this. It's also your fast unit. You can tempt us to get their plus one and things yeah. with this, which is really, really cool. Um, it's excellent because it's an opponent's movement phase, so um, you can you can use it to get some of your heavy units up the board, yeah. um, which have seen with the Vithans and things that, that can be really quite good. So if they if, you know if someone's closing and trying to get melter shots on your dreadnoughts and things, you can just just smack them straight away because um, in effect you can run and charge in a sense, but in their turn, um, it's great for shutting down close range shooting from people because they don't if you know if you, if you keep this in your hat until the end of the game they don't want to get too close to you um or, or they're a bit cool you know you, you've, and and it's also a good backup um 
let's say if you're playing Templar Assault or let's say you've got a lot of dudes in a land raider, you get out your land raider and you roll that double one. It, it, it's almost a, it's like another chance you've got next turn. Yeah. Because the enemy's going to say, yeah. well, I can move backwards. Yeah. My movement, but I'm still going to be 10 inches away and you can still charge me. Um, there's so no like, there's no chance of, with this as well, people shutting down uh, your, your shutting down the unit with an Overwatch reaction as well yeah. because you can't react to a reaction for me. So that's the really important thing. You're doing it out of sequence and also people can't react against you. Yeah, so that's that, that's one really of the big pros of things. these reactions. I think some of the cons of it, but it's only really to um, compare it to some of the other ones. Yeah. So I know it's the... Uh, let's say the World Eaters one and mm. the uh, Empress Children one, they both happen um, later on. So I think the Empress Chil Children one maybe is when they charge you, you charge them instead. Right, yeah. 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 Um, now, why those ones are so much better than this is because this one happens in their movement phase, which means they still have uh, options to maybe redirect some of their charges to, to you know, jump in and help. So to kind of counter you, yeah. Um, whereas some of the other similar you charge me, no, I charge you reactions. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a complete shutdown. Of, no, no, I'm now charging you. Yeah. There's nothing else you can do about it. Yeah. Um, and this one as well, just having your initiative plus D6 is is okay. But, you know, you're only really be doing it if you're within you know, six, seven inches. Yeah, you need to be quite close to be able to get this off, don't you? But, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that's a really great breakdown. Thanks for that, Harry. I, I found this has saved me in a number of situations. Um, but also, remember, you can use it. You know, that Spartan that's coming towards you, that's just come within 20, 10 inches of you, and you've got a unit that's about to come out of it, well... Yeah. Fuck you, because I'm going to charge that spine before you guys get out of it as well. Yeah, that's but, really excellent. Um, um, so that. there are there are a number of things, and I think it goes back to what Lee was saying. This is an assault based. Um, it, you know, it happens in the movement phase, but it's an assault based reaction, and you've got a shooting rule. You know, buffs your shooting, and now you've got a reaction that buffs your assault or makes your assaults out of turn so they really are a jack of all trades i think um and you can you know really utilize that so yeah really really good reaction uh, let's have a look at the warlord traits please lee so the warlord traits uh i i can't speak for anybody else but i found the solar marshal to be the best one if you've got a uh particular combat unit i'll talk about my experiences with that in a moment Raldoran's favorite isn't it yeah he, it's a really really <laughs> good one but i'll also talk about uh after harry's uh read read the solar marshal one i'll also talk about the problems with the solar marshal right of, of war as well but harry do you want to read the solar marshal one sure yeah so uh you have to be loyalist to pick this I mean, you're a pure fist, so obviously you're a loyalist. Um, warlord, so a warlord with this train, all models in any friendly unit that the warlord joins gain plus one to their weapon skill characteristics when locked in combat with one or more enemy units that have the traitor allegiance. In addition, an army whose warlord trait may work one reaction per turn in any one of the opposing players' phases as long as the warlord has not been removed as a casualty. This additional reaction may only be made by the warlord's unit and does not allow for units to make more than one reaction for per phase. Yeah, so um, what, where we've previously seen most warlord traits giving you an additional reaction in a particular phase and then you leveraging, leveraging that. So we saw with the Iron Warriors last time that there was an additional reaction during the uh, shooting phases an awful lot. This one gives you more tactical flexibility it's very powerful. use an additional reaction in in any of the one one phases that you want to use where i think that people come a bit unstuck with this is that um and people aren't necessarily always aware they see all the positive stuff but you can only use this against traitor legions it only works against traitors right so if you're taking this and uh you are playing a salamander's player you can't get you can get the reaction buff but you can't get the plus one uh weapon skill which i think is something to really bear in mind because i think with the changes to to weapon skills weapon skill five is so difficult to combat if you are weapon skill four and then your your templar and your champion so the, the way i use this is i use it on a champion who is weapon skill six um he then becomes weapon skill seven the templar brethren then become weapon skill six as well so it's really hard to uh combat this and to hit them uh when they are sort of at such high high weapon skill lee outsiders thoughts on this one what do you think 
So it's interesting that you say you add them to someone that's already repping skill five, because my first thought of this was stick them in a despoiler squad. Right, them, yeah. Spoiler squad. You got a weapon skill five despoiler squad. That's not a bad that's not not a bad shout. Or yeah, give it to a herald, right? And then it's fucking huge. Yeah. 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 Like I, I, skill four hitting on fives, that's, that's huge. Massive. It makes yeah. such a massive impact. Um yeah, I mean that's a really good, really, really good, good right? It's the most obvious one, but remember, it's only it's for loyalists only, and you can't use it against traders. Harry, you know your overall thoughts on this one. Is this the one that you would go to if you're not taking Sigismund? Uh, yeah, so obviously I'd never take it. Um, but no, yeah. So I I think it's excellent. I think I'm I'm more with you, Rob. That I would put probably put this on something like a herald or whatever you're yeah. taking, or even a praetor or delegatus, and just put it on your beefcake squad. You know, yeah, if you yeah. ten at weapon skill six, hard spells or something. <laughs> Would just yeah. be an immovable Nuts. object, truly. Nice. Um, yeah. But what you say about the traitor and um, loyalist thing is an interesting one, and I think it's maybe a bigger discussion. I don't want to go too much into, mm. but I think it's more apparent in this edition that there are some things that's traitor and loyalist. I played yeah. a Blood Angels play the other week, and he yeah. had round around and picked this. And uh, said, right. Oh well, mm, I'm a loyalist because I'm playing this. You know, I've got Sigismund in my army. Sigismund is loyalist. Yeah, uh, yeah. Browder in your army, Browder is loyalist. In the end, yeah. we said it's fine. Yeah. We and I think most people will say it's it's fine. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. It's a it's a warlord trait. You use it. Um, but I yeah. think that you should expect to not be able to use it. Yeah, I think so. Because I, I in that situation, I would have been like, well, no, you can't fucking use it. Because I'm, you know, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, right. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I will read uh, Warden of Inwhip. So um, when within six inches of an objective or within their own deployment zone, a warlord with this trait and all models in any friendly unit with that, that warlord joins, automatically pass any morale checks or pinning checks. Oh, lordy. Uh, they are called upon to make. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction during the opposing player's assault phase or uh, as long as the warlord has not been removed as a casualty. So I think this is really interesting that um, that it's kind of like a shooting... It feels to me like a shooting kind of uh, one, but uh, it's also got an additional reaction in the assault phase, which I think is interesting. I think there's a lot of leverage here to keep this with something like a uh, Castellan, which we'll have a look later, or an Armstoss, or um, something like that. There's no point putting on a Herald, though, because the Herald just kind of all, uh, unlocks this automatically. But it definitely feels like you should use it, well, to me... Use it on, you know, your your Castellan or Armistos attached to a squad of last cannons or Volkites at the back. They're never going to fail their pinning or morale check, so nothing to worry about there. Um, and then you can just use your additional um, uh, assault reaction as you want to with any close combat units you've got. So it's similar. To, uh, it's not the same as Stoic, Stoic Defender, which is a generic one from the rule book. It's almost the opposite, which is weapons cause pinning. But I think this would be great if you don't want to close combat um uh warlord uh harry any thoughts on this i uh, yeah pretty much the, the same same bag as you i would have said that um we're seeing head weapon teams as one of the most powerful things currently yeah um because they're so affordable they can react and in imperial fists you know you've got some really good options for hit on twos um so if you have a herald and an armor source or like a yeah, you, know, you can have two immovable objects at the yeah, back of the board. Yeah. I just feel the letdown is the assault reactions, which I mean they're not yeah. too bad. Um, but I feel like you're gonna be sticking this on a backline unit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if that backline unit's getting assaulted, then you probably you're probably doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so and, and it's one thing I want just a little note on is that I I, I do think the assault reactions are shooting reactions because you're mostly gonna be overwatching. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For this. yeah. And it's why it's one of my main gripes that maybe we'll go to later is that a lot of assault characters and the traits have been given additional assault reactions. Yeah, yeah. But and actually, it's it's like, a, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a really, so, that's a really good point. I think this, yeah, it is it's a really solid wall of trait. It's just unfortunately not as not, not quite as good as yeah. Marshall. Yeah. Uh Lee, do you want to read us Architect of Devastation? Yes, this warlord and all models with the Legion as a Startus Imperial Fist special rule in any unit he joins may re-roll failed to hit rolls of one as long as that unit is entirely within an area of terrain that grants a cover save okay. or embarked within a fortification. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction during the opposing player's shooting phase as long as a warlord has not been removed as a casualty. 
So I know I know Lee, you just read that, but what what's your initial kind of like thoughts on that? Anything that you think you could leverage there quite well? Uh, so it's also roll third to hit roll, so that would count for in um, close combat and also um, shooting yeah. as well. It's the uh, the fact that the unit is entirely within an area of terrain that grants a cover save, so mm. it kind of relies on your table having large enough areas of terrain that you can fit your whole unit on. Oh, unit in. Yeah, yeah. You can see it being a bit situational, that one. Yeah. Do you think it would be better to use, uh, I mean, uh, if you are going to take a bunker, a fortification, uh, and um, do you think it would be better then? Because you can, you know, if you've got yeah. a mass cannon squad behind or in a bunker or I assume behind a, um, an Aegis defence line, you can just re-roll ones on the hits there. True. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, I guess it depends on whether you want to be a cunt or not, really, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry, do you want to talk about uh, this one? Your thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I think this is probably the weakest one. I think the only reason you take this is to get that extra shooting action, which is mm. what a lot, a lot, a lot of people are just not bothering at the first bit of yeah. the wall of traits and just looking, yeah, at just looking which at one gives me a shooting action. Yeah. Um, I think that it raises a few questions of what is within area terrain. You know, if you yeah. put your guys behind an Aegis line, are they within area terrain? Yeah. Obviously, the sensible people will say yes. Um, but I think that is the thing that makes it, it's too situational. Yeah. And as and, it, and it's not only that, it's your re-roll being failed to hit rolls of one. You're already really good at shooting. Yeah. There's lots of other things in the game, such yeah. as tech marines and things that can improve your shooting. Yeah. That you don't need to be using your wall of trade on, on, on something like this yeah okay that's that's interesting i think uh especially you know if you were to take a squad of auto cannons you know you've already plus one weapon skill it would probably be better to be a warden of inwit than a architect of devastation i guess really to absolutely to pass those morale and pinning checks um but if you did feel the need to take a fortification then perhaps this might be one uh to take but i think I sorry so go for it mate. Go. I, sorry the mailman came um, I just find taking like a bunker with a force, unless your fluff of your force is, you know, you're defending an area or something. I just find it a bit boring. Yeah. Like, I mean, each to their own, but I just find it a bit boring that, oh, uh, oh, we've built this bunker and I've put my 10 man last cannon squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just a bit like, oh, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, I mean, it is very Imperial Fist to build a bunker and put a 10 man last cannon in, but. Yeah. I, I don't know, like it just I, I find it a bit boring, but I guess if you were doing something like that, then then this would potentially work. Um although you said about the Aegis defense line, didn't you? Yeah. And this says it has to be within an area of terrain. So would that I think that there's I, I think it, when defense. you're off, I think that Harry was saying that there are there are some ambiguity it, ambiguity uh, about this that you would have yeah. to get clarified and cleared up, I think. Um, um, but yeah, I think compared to the other ones, it's definitely the worst one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like Harry said, if you want to increase like the ballistic skill, then take something from the auto weapons or stick yeah. a fucking tech marine in there. Yeah, right. but it does give you that additional shooting reaction, which is arguably an imperial fist. Yeah, yeah, a really good reason to take it. Yeah, the reaction. Like you said the assault reactions are essentially shooting reactions. Yeah, aren't they? yeah, yeah. So. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. food for food for thought on that one. Let's have a look at the rights of war, please, Lee. So, um, Stone Gauntlet. Uh, this. So, in version one, Stone Gauntlet was the the most popular right of war that we saw with imperial fist we never ever saw hammerfall strike uh strike force i i um i don't use rights of war very often um but we will talk about this one briefly uh because there's been a fair few um fair few changes to it i think for me what makes this probably particularly strong is that you can stack it with other characters within an army so Fafnir ran for example um to make it like beyond good just completely nuts uh it seems but let's have a look so um effects phalanx water squads may be taken as troop choices for a detachment using this right of war we'll look at those a little bit later all models selected as part of a phalanx water squad in attachment using this right war gain the line subtype and the heart of the legion special rule so not only do they have their boarding shield that grants their five up in bun safe they've now got a six up uh um uh feel no pain uh when they're kind of within 
an area close to an objective which will stack against an apothecary so you can see where this one is going uh any model in a detachment using this right of war and with the legionis astartes imperial fist special rule with a boarding shield which is in unit coherency with at least two other models that also fit this criteria may re-roll all failed invulnerable saves made against shooting attacks or attacks made during the fight subbase so that's that's pretty nuts right so you've got a re-rollable five up um cover say uh sorry invun save which basically means you've got a four up uh four up in you know it's, it's mathematically it's the the equivalent so it's really really strong this bonus may not be claimed if the unit uh, uh the model is part of has just made a run move charge or a sweeping advance move in a current player turn or is falling back so it's better to be it's better to be charged to make you more survivable um but we'll have a look at kind of what happens with the if anything happens with the weapon skills if you do charge uh, a little bit later. Any model in attachment using this right of war with uh, the Legia Sarsis and Pure Fist Special Rule with a boarding shield, which is in unit coherency with at least two other models that also fit this criteria against the Hammer of Wrath Special Rule for the duration of any assault phase, which is uh, charged as declared for the unit that this model is part of. So there you've got the offset. So you can either get Hammer of Wrath. Uh, if you charge or you can re-roll your um, invulnerable saves if you get charged. So you can see that the, the two are offset. Let's have a look at the limitations. So uh, you must select Phalanx Water Squads to fill all compulsory troops choices and attachment. Why wouldn't you? That means you've got to take two Phalanx Water Squads. Uh, attachment using this right rule may not deploy models using the Deep Strike special rule or others as part of any Deep Strike Assault, Subterranean Assault or Flanking Assault. Um and units which must deploy by these methods therefore cannot be chosen as part of the detachment. I think that's probably fine. Uh, lots that you don't need to deep strike your Leviathan anymore, it's survivable enough. And a detachment using this right ball cannot take more elite and fast attack choices in total than they have troops choices and attachment. So for example, attachment with three troops choices could take three choices made up of fast attacks, elites, or a combination of two. So this does it, it means that you can't stack out your elites choices. You if you know for every troops you'll need to take um uh something. I think that you probably won't do too much fast attack apart from maybe javelin speeders. I think they're probably they work great um but it, there is a troops tax on uh on this one uh lee what's uh -huh. your initial thoughts on the stone gauntlet there uh, i really like this uh oh god do you, <laughs> do you not like it oh well, no, go on, go on. Uh, I mean, I don't, no, uh, no i hate it shit um <laughs> I was literally just looking at the Phalanx Water rules because I don't really know them. Yeah. Um, there's a few things I don't get on here. Uh, any model in detachment, detachment using the right war uh, with a boarding shield that is in unit coherency to others may rerun Bumble saves unless it's made a run move. But unless I'm mistaken, you can't run if you've got a boarding shield. Yeah, I guess it's just some form of future proofing or, or uh, whatever. But. Um... Yeah, um, there's a couple in there, but we'll get... what, what's your thoughts on it, Harry? Then, what, what is... yeah, you seem to be quite negative. I don't know. No, Lee, <laughs> Lee was talking about it, God, Lee. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I like the idea of this. I quite, I quite like the idea of a, of a kind of heavy infantry force just stomping across holding uh objectives. You've got phalanx warders, they've got the power axes, yeah, that's right. Do they have a shooting attack. Yeah, they yeah. can have a bolt gun as well. Or for, you can okay. kind of swap out the power to, the the power axe for the bolt gun. Uh, it's basically, it, it, as Lee said, it's it it will be a fucking pain in the ass to get these phalanx water squads off of objectives. Yeah, it's the same situation as when you're playing Iron Hands, Medusa Immortals. Basically, like there'll be an absolute pain. You'll need strength ten. Uh, well, not even strength ten because the because there are only one moon models, right? It's just the the reroll yeah. and the invuns combined with um, uh, feel no pain because you know your opponent is going to put, put put it there. So you've got to you know you could potentially got a five up, five up, five up. In, in you know and you're probably going to make quite a few of those so it's going to be really difficult to shift them uh but if you are into an infantry heavy list this might be the um the 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 one for the one for you so um but for your opponent i think it'll be difficult to to shift these off of objectives yeah yeah, Just, yeah it's, go it's a very very good right of war um yeah. i think we all agree on that and it's very thematic i think yeah. the issues are right it's from how it actually plays for both players on board. Yeah. 
Um, so it's very cool, you know. Oh my, my, my dude's gonna stand, and they're gonna stand behind their shields, and he can't kill them. Great. Yeah. Or my, my dudes get a hammer of wrath when they charge. Brilliant. But the, you know, with Phalanx Warders, then when you read into the Phalanx Warders rules and the fact they get plus one and uh, info when they're in, in base to base, as do characters in the squad. Yeah. And also they get plus one uh, weapon skill. It means that you you've got these squads. Let's say you've got 20 Phalanx Warders sat on objective with an apothecary unit. They've got a four up in of Pain. They've got a yeah. four up in Vault, free rolling. Um, there's 20 of them. And let's say you've taken um, a Warlord of Inuit. You can't pin them. You know, yeah, yeah. You, but the issue is, is there's nothing really that can deal with that. Yeah. You get in combat with them. Nah, your stuff's not getting through. Yeah. But then what we'll get to with Phalanx Warders is that Phalanx Warders don't do too much in return. Yeah. Um, and the few times I've played, I've, you know, a couple of times now I've played, especially with my Alpha Legion, I've played against a few, you know, Phalanx Waters, Phalanx Waters, Command Squad, Phalanx Waters, Phalanx Waters, you know, whatever. And things just get stuck in combat with them. They can't kill them and they can't kill you back. And I think that's a real negative <laughs> yeah. to, to the game because a lot of, a lot has been done with the game to speed things up. There's not much shred in the game. Yeah. Um, but you end up with these just really long, drawn-out combats Um that that's, that feels a little bit off, and and that would be my. But I think Can that's I, more more yeah. way that the the rival war combines with the unit that it requires yeah, you to take. It, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Can I also also um I might be getting confused with the the Reaver squad, but can um. Uh, command squads take boarding shields now as well. They can, yeah. So, you, so, so this would apply to a command squad as well. Yeah, so, so command squads are brutal with this because, if, yeah, they don't get the four up in vault as a phalanx water squad, but mm. you have two wind dudes, the weapons got five. Yeah. They've got five rollables, you can pop the in it. And they, and they come with a two up save, just an, an extra up save. So, well. command squads are fantastic um, in this, as, as is anything. But I think that it just needed a little bit more, you know, what they is a really good phalanx water squad. Oops. And you've got a really good right of war, and then combined, I think um, it it's the stack- it's the stacking, isn't it? That's the issue here. Because yeah. so Fafnir Ran, we'll talk about Fafnir Ran later. Also, kind of can be stacked with some of his rules uh, with it as well. And, I and was going to say, if you take that first wall, so Phalanx Warders, if they're in, is it three models in in together? They get plus one weapon skill. Or yeah, something? so you bump onto them, score six pretty easily, and then you hit more fives. So you uh, you take. So, are they weapon skill five? Are they? Well, no. So, so they they would get plus one weapon skill if they're in so base they to base, and then if you give them that warlord tree, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just can't get rid of them. Um, I wanted to do a stone gauntlet list. Because you can, that's why. And I feel sorry for that right of war because even people's salty tears <laughs> as they fail to remove a single fucking phalanx. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been better if you if it had just been breach of squads. Absolutely. Know, Compulsory yeah. because then it wouldn't yeah. snack. I think it's a compounded yeah. issue because you have to run it that way. You, yeah. it, so it, now it, that you've explained that, I I understand fully why you don't like this this yeah. right of war. But yeah. on the flip side of that, I think it's still. I think you could run this so it's not complete bullshit, and your opponents not. You, just you could take two squads shit. of ten, and then yeah. just that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Like, you don't have to take fucking twenty man squads. You don't have to put. I mean, I fucking would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you can you can support them with like uh, Legion Medusas or something. You know, you can throw in something shit to counteract the fact that these are sure, just, sure. You know, like. But you, sh- you shouldn't have to do that for right of war, right? No, um, no. So like, I, get, I get where you're coming from. Like, that, uh, yeah. It, and it, it gives you probably, without a doubt, the best line in the game, right? Because line sits on objectives and doesn't die. And yeah. and if you want that, this this is it. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it's the classic Imperial Fisting. It does everything, doesn't it? It, it doesn't yeah. really- it they fights don't. really well in close combat. It still has a shooting attack. Like if they didn't, well, I mean, even if they didn't have a shooting attack, they'd still be fucking good. Like, but I yeah. saw someone say that because Imperial Fist used to have that rule where if you wanted to play an additional turn against Imperial Fist, you could. And I saw yeah. someone saying they removed that because obviously no one's going to want to play an additional yeah. turn <laughs> against this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, let's have a look at uh, Hammerfall uh, Strike Four, shall we? Uh, so Lee, we'll get you to do this one because uh, we'll, we'll, Harry's baby is the temper assault. So Lee, go for it, please. Have a full strike force. Uh, so effects: uh, Phalanx Warder squads may be taken as troop choices in a detachment using this right of war. 
all models in a unit composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type and the legioness status imperial fist special rule in a detachment using this right of war may be given the deep strike special rule for plus 30 points per unit it's quite a lot i think um yeah uh, all models in a unit composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type upgraded to have the deep strike rule in a detachment using this right of war gain the shrouded five plus special war when right. deployed onto the battlefield as part of a deep strike assault. This effect lasts until the beginning of the controlling player's next player turn. Mm -hmm. uh, limitations, models with the vehicle unit type taken in a detachment using this right of war must begin the battle in reserves and may not be assigned to a deep strike assault, subterranean assault, or outflanking assault. Uh, and someone's going to have to read that bottom bit because it's covered. I was trying to get the attachment using this rival and not take the fortifications. Oh, okay, well, you're not going to fucking deep strike a fortification, are you? <laughs> I am. Um, so basically, you just want a fuck ton of terminators and phalanx water squads just fucking. <laughs> deep striking down on this with their boarding shields and then their um the terminator shields with their three up because then you get your shrouded damage mitigation as well to kind of offset offset it as well um it's quite a cool right of war you've got to be brave Excellent. to take that though yeah i, I like this you've got to have a, a set of fucking balls on you to um to run that uh yeah. thanks water squad maybe take a strip to set so Phalanx Water Squads are the ones we were just talking about. Yeah, right? that's right. But they don't get their re-rollable inbun and things like that, right? And okay. So yeah, that. this I, I like this a lot. Yeah, deep strike a load in and then have a have a supporting force in like land raiders or something come fucking flying on. So you've you got the guys deep striking to hold the ground and then they're getting supported. I, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. it's quite cool. Yeah. Really I've, awesome. seen, I've never seen anybody run a Hammerfall Strike Force in the first iteration or, or this one, but it's quite interesting. But I think you've got to be brave like to, to run it because I think you get shot off the board. It yeah. does feel like the previous, um, the old um, Day of Revelations, though, because I think you got five up, uh, kind of like Shrouded or Cover Save. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'd, you'd, on have, the you'd have to max out your, your units, your deep striking in, to make that 30 points worthwhile, wouldn't you? You'd, yeah. you'd have to... Yeah, I really I like that. That's fucking. But then I guess the risk of having big blobs of dudes coming in is there's higher risk of um, some sort of mishap happening. Yeah, yeah. orders don't come as uh, don't get line though in that right. No, that, that so line, that would be my gripe with this. And uh, okay. If in stone they, in stone Gormer, if phalanx waters had that line and half the legion taken out stone Gormer and put in this, then I think that would be really nice balance. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. nor do they be no, nor do they need to be taken as compulsory troops, right? You could just no, take no, 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 you, you don't need to take. I, I think this shines with um, you could you could you could stick in some uh, no, deep striking support teams. Okay. Um, or you could even deep strike in. What I'd love to see is deep strike in like ten last cannon teams. <laughs> yeah. uh, or no, not small, or, you know, or, or even ten auto cannon teams, right? Because you, you yeah. deep strike them in, uh, and they're they're snap shooting it on fives, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think I think it's a cool right of war, but it, it still lacks some issues. The pre the previous right of war used to be stupidly restricted because I think everything infantry had to deep strike or something and you didn't have it, anything the vehicles vehicles had to start in the yeah, so you, yeah you can't take a damocles you, or you, and you can't have that um you, and, and, you, and you can't really have much to help your reserves because yeah multiple units deep striking with master signals is, is good I, at the minute i like the theme of it if i ran this i would probably have uh deep strike and breacher squads and i'd stick the phalanx in land raiders and have them coming on yeah that would be fun. That'd be really cool. I think it's 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 good rifle war. It's 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 now usable um, with the shrouded and things. It's really cool. But I think the issue being is that you can and will come to you can buy deep strike assault for your terminators anyway. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the stuff that you're going to want to be deep striking in. Yeah, you, you can do it anyway. You're you're, you're, ba you're basically paying. I think you're right. The shrouded is great though, I think, because there's not many ways to gain shrouded apart from reaction. And then you just gain the shrouded anyway um, from this. But I, I actually think 30 points is a lot to pay for um yeah. for the ability to deep strike. I think it'll all mount up quickly with the amount yeah. of yeah. you know, on some command squads and things would be quite good. I, I yeah. would have liked them to have spiced it up and maybe you could deep strike things like rapiers and Dreadnoughts, I think that would have been really cool. Yeah, Dreadnoughts um, would have been good. But yeah, it's it's good. It's it's now usable, and I think um, I've I've seen a couple of people 
you know, saying, oh, look, I'm going to use hammer for strike force. Yeah. I'm going to make a hammer fall army. And, yeah, and I, I think if you if you have run a, a hammer fall army, we'd love to uh, hear from you. If you put your um, kind of your experiences in the comments below, that'd be uh, that'd be great. Or if there's any combinations that we haven't talked about for a hammer fall strike force, it, I think it feels like the most interesting one, but I don't think it's necessarily the, the best one. Uh, right, Harry, Harry, talk about um, temper assault because. Um, in version one, you basically did this, and then yeah, I was quite they, surprised. Heard, they heard that you were running this, so they decided yeah. to make this right war in your honor, I assume. Um, so go, read the effects and limitations for us. So, units of Templar Brethren may be taken as troops' choices in a touch resistance right war, and all these Templar Brethren units gain line and heart of legion. Uh, so Ooh. they're scoring and they're getting plus one to their film and objectives. And things. Fantastic, yeah. For the duration of any turn in which you unit of Templar Brethren, so it's any turn, which is an important one, which a unit of Templar Brethren take, taken as part of such a or disembarked from model, all models in the disembarked unit gain rage to special rule. This does not apply for force of emergency disembarkation. Um, so rage two being they've got another additional attack on the charge. Can you um, um, can you use can you leverage that with the um Imperial Fist uh, specific reaction, and can you react out of a vehicle? Uh, so you can't react to charge out of a vehicle, no. <laughs> um, now, there's, I, I think this is where it, where it would be nice to have a little bit of a, an, an errata, is mm. for them to say, because I play this as for the duration of any player turn, it needs right. to say player turn or game turn, because right. it, it, it crops up that, let's say you have first turn, you jump out of your land raider and you don't and you fail your charge mm -hmm. and then in their turn you get the charge off yeah some people are saying oh well that's still the same turn it's still turn two for example okay am i getting rage so that's a, that's, that's an interesting one but i personally i think that that is the the, the player turn so um, yeah yeah and because, you, because of the way it discusses disembarking as well i think yeah, yeah. and it doesn't work with the advanced reaction because the, 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 the union's not on the board and you don't line of sight Things, <clears throat> things like that. So, um, limitations as attachment is this right war must select Templar Brethren to fill all compulsory troop choices in detachment. Boo hoo. Um, this right of war may only be taken for detachment with the loyalist allegiance and all detachments in an army. Um, the, uh, uh, sorry, and all detachments in an army that includes attachment, this right of war must have a variation of the Legion of Astartes special rule. So, um, no militia or Mechanicum allies there. <laughs> Detachments using this right of war cannot take more elites and faster chat choices in total that they have troops choices in the detachment. Okay. Um, so like like before, uh, really. Yeah. So that's not too bad because your elite units are your Templar um, and faster tech not be taking too much off. Yeah. So this is an excellent right of war, I think. It completely came out of blue. Um, it's very Siege of Terror themed. Mm. You know, the Black Sword um, and I don't think there's really any downsides to it because if you if you if you're an appeal fist player and you want to run two units of Templar Brethren, yeah, take this run. There's no real debt negatives. Imperial fist, you're going to be running heavily on your uh, heavy support and troops yeah. anyway, so uh, it's, that's not really an issue. And you can still what's really good with this is you can still deep strike subterranean assault outflank with this. Yeah. So ba basically, you're gonna you but you are forced down a route of kind of going. 10 man Templar Brethren squad character plus an apothecary in you know, an raider, raider is the is the way that you're going to kind of you're going to see this isn't it because they can take yeah. that as a dedicated transport as well exactly yeah so um yeah it would be cool to see it with I've, I've hope, i hope i did toy the idea of storm eagles and things with really yeah. these because any any thing they jump out of uh, but the fact that you, know, you can only have 10 dudes in a squad yeah it, it is just yeah land raiders and Templar Brethren which is the list i made you know, two, two years ago, I, that, I saw yeah. this and was like, oh, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. It's perfectly, Thanks. yeah. Um, um, and then how many kind of Land Raiders and Templar Brethren roughly can you get in a two and a half or 3K list? Can you take three or four squads of these? Um, so a 3K list um, used to be just, now if it's about 2,700 if you take characters in Sigismund, um, you can get four Raiders and 40 Templar. Yeah. Um, so I think a three K oh, list because that's a fuck ton of last kind of shots as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think a three K list. I, I I think what I had at that three two fifty greetings is now three K. So four raiders, four Templar ish with some characters and two um, vindicators that dropped down to three K. Um, 
so and then or oh, I did uh, yeah three raiders thirty templar dawn yeah. cross goals and that's really cool that's, that's okay. really so, cool because they 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 they've come down in points quite a bit uh, templar right so, okay yeah. Awesome. Okay, that sounds like a really that's a winning combination if you like uh, like assaults. Definitely, I think I, if I was to take any right of war, I'd definitely go down uh, go down that route because yeah, I'd say the the only negative is is um your uh, what you your core elites get them into the fight units right or your also your scoring units. Okay, so it can become quite a trap, and I have you know, I've had this with the pure Templar force. It become quite a trap that. All you want to do is get your stuff in combat, which means it's all dead or dying mm. by the end of the game. Yeah. So you're not scrimming objectives at the end of the game, or you're having to like hang a squad around scoring points. But you can so easily just take two tax squads in. Around. I think that's it, it isn't is. it? Which is yeah, just so yeah. they don't because then again it, they may be taken as troop choices and then detachment. But also if you just take two bare bones tax squads, they also unlock your elites and fast attacks as well, right? Yeah, so you, you, you have to feel the compulsory with Templar, so you have to take two squads on this. <clears throat> oh, do you? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I... To feel all compulsory troop choices and detachment. So you, 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 you have to have your two Templar squads, which is, which is going to be in Raiders. Oh, right. So okay. that's already 700 points. Yeah. Um, so Okay, cool. But, Plenty room for this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, really interesting. Uh, that sounds that sounds really cool. Right, let's uh, let's have a look at the war gear because they've probably got the most expansive or some of the most expansive war gear options. So, um, like they had in the previous edition, they've got visual storm shields and teleport strikes. So, visual storm shield can be given to uh, if it's got imperial fist and independent characters that does not have the unique unit subtype. So, you can't be giving your visual storm shield to Sigismund, uh, and they can do that for 20 points. Additionally, any model with the Legion, any society's imperial fist special rule in a Tartarus Terminator squad or Legion Tartarus command squad may exchange a bolter for a visual storm shield for 15 points, and any model with the Legion, any size special rule. Uh, in Cataphracti or Legion Cataphracti Command Squad may exchange a combi bolter for a vigil pattern storm shield for 10 points. So if you're curious about why they're two different points, it's because uh, Cataphracti are slow and cannot run, whereas Tartarus can run. So they are giving you the three up in one save, but are punishing you by paying five extra points per guy. So Visual Storm Shield gains the three up Invun save. Invun save granted by Visual Storm Shield do not stack with other invulnerable saves and cannot be modified by any other special rules. So, and it's also not a boarding shield as well. So you can't re-roll this in yeah. your um in I've your seen a lot of people doing stone gauntlet. That. That, that's not a thing that can be done. If you see if you see someone doing that, slap the dice on that. Yeah, that's exactly right. If a model with has another invulnerable save, then the controlling player must choose one to use. A model with a visual pattern storm shield may never gain additional attack for being armed with two close combat weapons or make attacks using a special rule the two hand is a special rule either okay so you can't give your guy a one of those giant chainsaws the two-handed chainsaws and a visual pattern storm shield because his two-handed chainsaw won't work uh so this is a great piece of war gear it makes them really survivable i think combined with um terminators now being two wounds it makes them even more survivable and then perhaps giving your um yeah if you were to take legion tartarus terminator squad uh with some sort of character like a um a champion and then take the solar marshal right of war you've then got a weapon skill five two wound three up in vulnerable save uh dudes with whatever weapons you want to give them so uh this will make a really hardy terminator um uh, kind of basic legion terminator terminator squad i think uh, any thoughts on that there's one thing i do want to say on this and it's a little bit of a rules thing mm. um so first so the visual storm shield does not make a character heavy no nope. and that that has some issues let's say you put this this guy if you have a pro tool with this in yeah. a unit of um in the unit finance waters yeah they can no longer re-roll re-roll their the, armor the, the unit cannot the order. unit cannot because the whole unit has to have heavy you can get around this because, um, and I've seen someone do this, you can take a visual storm shield and a boarding shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you can have your dude in, in, in his phalanx water squad. Yeah. Oh, God. Re get, getting his, uh, getting his reroll saves and then he can, then he can jump out with his visual storm shield. So personally, I think the visual storm shield should, um, that it, it, it's a bit of a funny one there because obviously they're not going to give it heavy because they need Tara squads. Yeah. The other, so, the, the other thing is, that the rules 
because it doesn't say it replaces a piece of war gear. You as just well. take it. Just you just take it. Yeah. Yeah. So so just it's just something to be aware of. I doubt it's ever going to come up, and I, I I wouldn't play it. But if you've got a visual storm shield dude in the squad, of yeah, breaches they no longer become heavy, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, other than that, it's an absolutely unreal bit of kit. You know, a cat, a, you know, a Tartarus champion or a Praetor with a fire hammer and one of these, or mm. a Solite Gorm and one of these. It's just yeah, super. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lee, because you did the Hammerfall, uh, uh, Hammerfall right. I think it's probably worth you reading the Teleport Strike and then seeing what we think of these things together. Go for it. Uh, all models with Legion as a starter: Imperial Fist, Special Rules, and a Legion Cataphracty Terminator Squad, Legion Tartarus Terminator Squad, Legion Cataphracty Command Squad, or Legion Tartarus Command Squad. Maybe given the Deep Strike Special Rule for twenty-five points per unit. Any model with both Legion as the starter's Imperial Fist and independent character special rules may be given the Deep Strike special rule for plus 20 points per model. Right on. Any so thoughts seems, on that? Yeah, well, it seems a bit strange that you pay 30 points on the right of war and 25. So you're, not get, you're not getting the, the shrouded with it, yes, are you? Uh, true. And it's also limiting it to just Terminators. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, fair yeah. I think it will mount up though. Like yeah, if you have a you have a character in a Terminator squad, you know that's that's uh, forty five points just to, for the right to deep strike. So yeah, it's it, points mount up, and then you've got you know add your shields to them, then it really starts to mount up. I think um, uh, I, but a cool unit nonetheless. I mean, I feel like if you're taking if you're deep striking like Terminator squads in. Me personally, I would do like Cataphracty Terminator squads, maybe two in the backfield of an opponent just because they have to think about it. I wouldn't be sticking characters in there because they're going to fucking die. Like this is something that now your opponent has to worry about. These yeah, you could, you could do some combi head. melters on some Terminators can yeah. re and really cause a threat. Oh. Um, rather than massive units of characters and this and that and stick it in the backfield just for them to get shot off yeah. the next turn. I think that's more... Because I've played this in first edition and that's exactly what the guy did to me. And just having these units suddenly appear in your backfield is yeah. like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. I've, I've, I can stay away from them, but they're there. I need to, you know... Need all your little, Yeah, all your little back backfield scoring units and that now your your tax squad that you thought was safe sitting on that objective has now got a fucking <laughs> I mean, squad of oh, it's got bearing down on it yeah yeah so that that's how i would use them personally rather i wouldn't i, yeah. I mean maybe i'd change my mind if i played games against them but personally i wouldn't be sticking character not for 20 points to stick on a character to yeah, I, I think that's yeah prohibitively expensive but uh, nonetheless a really good and interesting thing that you could do just a bit of a I really like it. Thing. I, I will i will say that um dawn comes with deep strike base right so i think that that does thrust upon you to give him some deep strike terminators um you've got yeah. hospitals which come with deep strike stop yeah, if you're not I'm using those looking. units yeah then then, then, then a command squad you know, a Tartarus command squad with Vigil Storm Shields deep striking in um, is, is, you know, a, a really harsh thing to face. And I, I think it's, it's really cool because you can charge out a deep strike as well. It gives yeah. Terminators a lot more flip. Whereas before, yeah, they were just spawn in the side. Yeah. Now they're instantly a threat. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's have a look at the next uh, round. So uh, some of my faves. Uh, Harry, why don't you do the Solarite Paragon because I want to do the Iliastus. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this almost starts with the most important bit. Any model with a Legion of Stars, Imperial Fist, make change of Power Fist for Solar Gorn for five points, sorry, and make change of Thunder Hammer for three. Um, these are counts power weapons. Uh, Solar Power Gorn, Strength 10, AP 1, Melee Unwieldy. Um, so, first one, any model. Unreal. So all your terminals. Yeah. And, just a command, just, uh, and a command they, squad as well. Like command squad. That, yeah. that would be so, amazing. Yeah. So everyone whinges about husk girls, but a command squad with solar gauntlets and a storm shields is, is the same thing. Yeah. Um a strength 10 base is fantastic. So um, good. It's not you, you, you know, it's not characteristic. So even if you're you know, there might be some psychic powers that drops your strength and things, you are strength 10, you're always strength 10. Um AP1, again, great. And then melee. It's fantastic. So you can put this on a character that's let's say you've not taken a visual storm shield or you know tax squad sergeants and things. They're getting that additional attack. 
uh, which was always a really good stick. They, it lost Mastercrafted. Um, so I think then it's not quite as powerful as it was before, because before you used to get to reroll once and challenges and have Mastercrafted. Yeah. So characters with these aren't quite the same murder machines they used to be. But what you've got now is you've got entire squads with them. Which is yeah. just yeah, really fun. It's um, it's also going to fuck up anybody who's got battle hardened as a rule because of yeah, the, of doesn't, doesn't care. Yeah. I think Abaddon's the only person that gets away with that because he drops some parts. Right. Oh, of course. Yeah. There's, there's but, a, yeah. But really, but... really, yeah. It's it's for five points. I think that's a bargain. Although you have got to pay the thing. The thing about this is that centurions have to pay a bit of a premium to have a power fist it's like 20 points or something isn't it something else and then you've got to pay another five points on top of that but it's where it's the terminators i think is really like either centurions uh terminator squads of any kind of type this is very where, where yeah. it really comes I've, into it so I've, 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 I've seen a lot of discussion about what is better thunder hammer or a solarite because you're effectively the melee doesn't matter the ap1 yeah. doesn't matter in a terminator versus terminator yeah. but maybe that brutal two to get through the uniform might be better um yeah. so i mean maybe a mix in this squad could be quite cool yeah i think see. so yeah ap1 um, a close combat ap1 is is pretty rare nowadays as well strength 10 ap1 it, they just delete vehicles yeah Absolutely yeah. yeah, you've got to be careful, I think, about the explosion, actually. Like, if you, you're going to... Oh, you're, 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 you're going to lose yeah. some guys to this, I think, yeah. Cool. All right, let's have a look at the Iliastus. So I was really excited. I don't leave home without a squad of Iliastus um, uh, now. And the fact that they're auto weapons means that Imperial Fists get a plus, uh, plus one uh, to hit. So any model with the uh, Imperial Fist special rule and the infantry unit type makes change a heavy flamer for an Iliastus assault cannon for 10 points. So that means that your uh, heavy heavy weapons dudes are can take this for 10 points each. Uh, Legion Predators uh, may exchange its turret-mounted Predator cannon for a turret-mounted twin-linked Iliastus assault cannon for no additional points. Don't do that. It's, it's I don't think it's worth it. Um, and any model with a Dreadnought or vehicle unit type and Legion is the Pyro Fist special rule may exchange a heavy flamer for an Iliastus assault cannon for 20 points each. It's eye-watering expensive oh. to do that um, because for just the one contemptor in order to take two Ilias assault cannons it's 40 points now which i think is just a bit of a trap isn't it yeah i just think it's not it's it's just not worth taking it probably look cool and do some damage but i just think that just don't basically it's too expensive uh range 24 strength 6 ap4 assault 4 rending 6 up add a malfunction now the biggest thing to say is that it's assault 4 so i've caught out a number of people before where i've hopped out of a um a rhino where they've gone well that unit can't can't shoot right and i'm like ah it's an assault weapon not a um not a so they scrapped salvo didn't they they used to be salvo yeah so there used to be something i think but i, I can't remember now they're assault they're they're really versatile so you, you know you can move your rhino get out get out six or get out seven or whatever it is and then um and then use these as well so the threat range is, is quite big as well uh they do have malfunctions so if a weapon with this special rule is used to make a shooting attack as part of any reaction it gains the get hot special rule for that shooting attack so this is a bit of a pain when you are getting reacted against because um you are gonna want to return fire on these guys um but you'll have to roll each of them individual get some different colored dice because uh you need to know about the gets hots uh an absolutely fantastic piece of war gear i think the optimum uh usage on this is not on a vehicle and not on a predator but just on a heavy sports squad rolling around and rhino you don't need to max out the squad you could just have te uh, five in a squad as a bit of a um uh, you know a bit of a distraction that it can pump out 20 shots per uh shooting um phase so yeah i really really rate them i think they're great but they are just on normal guys and those normal guys will just go down to bolt of fire as well i think a squad of 10 in a rhino works out about 310 maybe 315 points it's uh, expensive it's expensive yeah it's expensive, yeah, it's expensive. yeah but it's, i think that um they if you can keep them safe on those initial first turns of night fight and then go in um i think that they can do some really serious damage and they can help out with uh dreadnoughts in a pinch as well because of the rending as well yeah cool right let's have a look at the uh next uh one so a uh, castellan so we'll do this one and then have uh a wee a break uh lee do you want to talk us through the castellan please yep so uh legioness consularis castellan plus 20 points 
Uh, any Legion Centurion with Legion as a starter's Imperial Fist Special Rule may be upgraded to a Castellan console instead of selecting any of the standard console upgrades, granting that model the benefits listed below. Uh, special Rules. The Castellan gains the Fire Support Special Rule and the Heavy Unit Subtype. Fire Support. When making an attack with a heavy, with a heavy weapon, the Castellan may increase the number of attacks made by that weapon by plus one when making a shooting attack. For example, a Castellan making a shooting attack with a heavy free weapon would roll an additional dice for its attacks, rolling four dice in total. In addition, any Legion heavy sports squads in the same detachment as the Castellan gain the line. <laughs> Unreal. Fucking bitch. It's nuts. For 20 points, it's fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah. So this uh, is what you combine with Templar Assault then. Yeah. So, War Gear, uh, Mastercrafted Heavy Bolter, Mastercrafted Auto Cannon, Iliastus Assault Cannon. In addition, he can't ride around with a jump pack, uh, jet bike, combat bike. Uh, he can't take a combat shield, boarding shield, power fist, solarite, power gauntlet, lightning claws, or any of the other fucking two handed bullshit. But you're not doing that, are you? He's there to nope. give. Heavy support squad, fucking line. That is yep. it's fucking nuts. Like, yeah. and it doesn't even need to be the warlord, right? He's just, he just is in the army. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And well, no. Line. Like, yeah. So this is, this is absolutely fantastic. I think you've got a choice to make about the weapons. So I have him running around with the Iliasis assault, um, assault squad, uh, because of, because of reasons. And then having five, uh, five shots from his gun is, is pretty, uh, pretty tasty, um, as well. I think that, um, if you're gonna, if you're taking him as a warlord and, um, you give him the auto cannon, I think there's a really good argument to take warden of, um, in wit or, mm using him with the stoic defender which gives him and his unit um the pinning so i think that those are also really kind of uh, some good combinations but again with the imperial fist as you said earlier harry everything just stacks really nicely yeah, and I think it, that this is a, a legion where it's like right this stacks with this and this stacks with this and this stacks with this to make some absolutely winning combinations yeah, that, that perhaps other legions don't necessarily have one of the things we sorry go on lee you were talking about the uh, the Iliastus assault cannon a minute ago, and yeah. I was thinking that sounds really good, but you're using a heavy support slot, yeah. in potentially quite a you know potentially better choices. But then you make it line, and you're like, well, fucking boom, done. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. That heavy yeah. support unit is now scoring. Scoring. Yeah, and it's you nuts. Can just yeah, I, and I think well. in Zone Mortalis as well. Like, if you're gonna get anything in Zone Mortalis, you want to you, your one and only heavy support choice. You want to take fact, the fact that it's assault as well means you can literally just clear an objective by shooting everything to death. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. Oh, oh, um, yeah, and I then think... more the more devastating in a player's uh, turn as well because they've obviously got the return fire and the Overwatch as well. Yeah. So if they're within twenty four, you you know, your opponent's going to suffer, I think. So shoot if, them beyond uh, 24 inches. They've changed them. I know we're just going back briefly, but that, that malfunction rule, did that not used to be that if you rolled like three, three ones? ones. Three yeah. Games? Yeah, it's much simpler now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One okay. one thing I'll note on the Castellan, in which another laurel in the in the Imperial Fist helmet <laughs> crest, <laughs> they, they've got rid of a lot of things like gold and Malagos and things that made... Yeah, because use like things that you could stack with. So, so yeah. for example, Malagos used to be able to make better troops. Yes, yeah. and then you could stack yeah. that with um, armored breakthrough, and, and and you could do these this kind of crazy shit. Yeah. That's that's all gone. Yeah. Apart from this motherfucker here, he is one of the only people. I think it's that this is the only thing that affects an army list outside of Rights of War that makes something fine. Yeah, I suspect so. It's yeah, the, like, the, a lot you, of love has been given to the Imperial Fists. From you there. stack this with something like. Um, you know, so, something like Armored Breakthrough. Yeah. Well, no, maybe not, not like, but something like Templar Assault, where I'm talking about, you know, you can then, you've got, you've got scoring Templar uh, and uh, scoring uh, uh, and heavy, heavy, heavy sports, yeah, yeah, it's nuts, right? You don't need Templar, it's just, just send them straight out, send them off. And when you're placing down your objective, you just go, okay, well, I'll just place this one in this cover right here. You know, yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's, be, it's, so. it's just, bro, they don't gain harder Legion, do they? No, just no, like, no, no, not that also, I don't know if you've heard of this cheeky. If you're struggling with what to give your caster, 
uh, you can give him Rob's favorite weapon. You can give him a Nemesis Bolter. <laughs> Fuck off. Then he gets to shoot. <laughs> he gets to shoot it twice because he gets plus one attack with each heavy weapon. So. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh. So, so, so he's, I didn't <laughs> realize that was a thing. I thought you could only choose those three Warger options. But... Yeah, because there's no restrictions, so you can still just buy an Nemesis Bolter. Because just buy <laughs> so, like yeah. a cowboy kind of with the asses in one arm. And that's ridiculous. Give him a heavy Bolter, just chuck it on the floor. That's that's Nemesis as Bolter. ridiculous as somebody taking vigil, Pat and Storm Short, and a boarding. Uh, boarding so you can give, can that. you give this guy, hang on, so can you give this guy a power weapon? A Nemesis Bolter, a Heavy Bolter, a Boarding Shield, and a Vigil Storm Shield. I reckon he can. Ah. And the Solar Marshal right of War. For plus yeah, just give him, <laughs> have him the little cart. <laughs> the observatories next to all this stuff. <laughs> that's completely obscene. Uh, that's great. Right, we're going to take a break there. When we come back from our break, we're going to be having a look at the units within the army list as well. So catch you off the break. start recording that'd be great right welcome back to uh, <laughs> round uh, two of our deep dive into the imperial fist and we're going to start looking at the individual units within the army list as well uh we're going to start off with rogel dawn you can see a rather beautiful rogel dawn here painted by the one and only richard gray in a non-metallic metal, which is absolutely amazing we mainly saw this in the flesh and it was it was incredible um but that heralds uh, Rogel Dawn and his rule. So as you might expect, he is a bit of a badass. Uh, and I would say he's probably more of a badass now than he was in the previous okay. edition. But he's certainly more points than he was in the previous edition as well, because he was one of, one of the cheaper uh, Primox that you're able to get. Uh, so he comes with movement eight, which is pretty standard. Weapon skill eight, ballistic skill six, uh, strength six, toughness six, wound seven, initiative six, attack six, leadership 10, and a two up save. Uh, we'll go through his um, warlord options in a minute, but he's got the all important frag grenades to help him through cover as well, which is uh, something that some Primarchs don't often have or they didn't have in first edition. Uh, but he does have um, uh, Legion Sarsity's Imperial Fists. So he's plus one to hit with bolt and um, auto weapons, which is interesting. Uh, he's, of course, got Massive yeah. Legion. He's got Bulwark of the Imperium. He's also got Crusader, which I think probably will be very helpful. Furious Charge 2, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I assume that still affects the strength, Harry. So he's actually strength eight on the on the charge. Yeah, well, when we get to his weapon, it's... Um, um, and then... Yeah. Okay, cool. And then... Um, Fuck me, yeah, I've just seen his weapon, actually. Fuck me, yeah, okay, he's he's super strong. He's got deep strike, so that links back with what Harry was saying about your Terminators, your Terminator Command Squad, and how you might want to combine the, the two, uh, two together. In terms of his Warlord trait, he has Sire of the Imperial Fist, um, which uh, this is what it gives him. So all models with both the Legionis Astartes Imperial Fist Special War and the character subtype in the same army as uh, Rogel Dawn may use his leadership characteristic instead of their own. And any unit that a part, uh, part of may add plus one to the total number of successful wounds, course for purposes of resolving which side has won combat. This is not stacked with any other increase of result result. So two things I'd say there. Uh, so that means that the entire army is now leadership 10, which is fucking awesome uh, nice. because uh, leadership is uh, taking a big hit especially around night fighting as well, which is absolutely wicked. The other one is that um, that plus one to, um, to to resolving combat is, is amazing because even if you draw combat, um, you could still win it because you've got the plus one to that as well. It stacks with Vexillas as well. Oh, it does it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, it does oh, it's, 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 it's just any not other one. No, it's sorry, 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 sorry. No. Um, it doesn't, yeah. So um, that's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So two rules that are brilliant. Uh, in addition, the controlling player of an army with Rogue Dawn in may select one phase at the start of the battle before any models are deployed onto the battlefield during the chosen phase of their opponent's turn. An army that includes Rogue Dawn gains an additional reaction as long as Rogue Dawn does not, not removed as a casualty. So depending on your army makeup and uh, what you think on your opponent, you can take a look at your opponent's um, army if you are playing, I don't know, uh, World Eaters, for example, you might want to have one additional reaction in the assault phase 
to deal with Overwatch or something like that, but you can judge it uh, depending on your army's uh, makeup. So two or three really great things built in with the Sire of the Imperial uh, Imperial Fist there. Let's have a look at his war gear. Can I just say one thing about that? Just one interesting thing is that all models for Legion has started Imperial Fist Special Rule and the character subtype. So I'm guessing you want to be keeping your sergeants alive. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. 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 Got it. I, I like that. There needs to be something. Otherwise, it's just fucking too easy. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Give us a break. So get, get an image to spot. Get an image to spot. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let's go to uh, the um, his uh, armor. Let's go with uh, Harry. Do you want to take us through uh, this one, please? Yeah, auric armor. So two up armor, so four percent vulnerable, fairly standard, and no attack may wound Rebel Dawn on better than four plus. Regardless, that's pretty good. Or special rules. That's great. Excellent. Really, really good. Yeah, um, it's normally most of the primal. So got some strength eight, strength ten, or whatever. Yeah, but, but and even like terminators with power fists, right? It's just like, well, fuck you. Would use yeah, it it's, too, it's, but actually, it's winning me on a four. So fuck. yeah, that's dreadnoughts great. as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fucking they, wicked. They got to wound him before they're brutal. So yeah. so he sometimes. He, he can stand up and oh, I've taken a instead of yeah. Um, you want me to do the rest? Yeah, please. Yeah, bulwark and imperium. Um, so any successful charges that target dawn or the unit is joined was counted as a sword of charge. That's one of those rules that is like, oh, I need to remember that one. Mm. Um, as with a lot of pro marks and characters, they sometimes have these little rules in. that's actually pretty huge. Yeah, that's especially huge. if you chuck that in with um. You know, stone gauntlet and stuff, you're already getting those. You know, you want to yeah. be charged, is, 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 is a lot of this, uh, yeah. And it's also like it's just like a freebie reaction, right? Because one of the reactions is to force yeah. people to do a sword charge, but he's just like, Well, me and my unit are just like, we can fucking do that anyway, so yeah, exactly. So, as you say, you're facing world eaters, which which rely so strong on not having sword charges. Um, you can effectively have him and two other units in your army just yeah. shutting down rage and well, that kind of stuff. Um, Storm's Teeth, his colossal. Chain blade, uh, so it's a chain weapon, it's plus two strength, AP2, two handed, murder strike, six plus shred, and reaping blow. Um, so reaping blow is if you're in base contact with two or more models, mm-hmm. you, you get uh, a number of additional attacks. So, um, yeah, quite often he's charging in a strength 10 with nine attacks on charge. That's nuts. Like uh, he's because uh, that weapon used to be fucking dog shit in version one. Like right? yeah, he's he's able to like exchange it for a, a strong man attack, but now he's just got it all the time. Um, so murder strike six plus. He's not got brutal or anything in there. Um, so he's he's just excellent at munching infantry. Just just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Uh, Voice of Terror is, is just a very good bolt gun. So twenty four range, twenty five BP three. Oh, it, but, it a, but it is a but but it is a bolt weapon as well. So you get plus, and it's a bolt. Plus, weapon. Yeah, yeah, you're one. hitting on. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, so. That's pretty cool. Like, he's fucking good. Cool. He's he, really fucking good now. He is. I, you know, well, I've played him um, a few times now. Normally, deep striking with Huskars. Um, and, you know, I played him against our friend Giles. And I just sent him off into back lines because mm. he's charging into these infantry squads and yeah. he just rips them up. Um, he, he, maybe he's not quite as good against other Primarchs. He's not got Brutal. He's only Murder Strike on 6+. plus, um, So he's not quite as good against Dreads. Um, but, you know, being Strength 10 with a lot of attacks on the charge, he, he's, yeah, a, a true force to be reckoned with now. You uh, you Deep Strike him down with a load of Terminators and there's not many things that can deal with that, is there? No, like, no. Fucking hell. You it's... Just, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... it's um, I mean, you could probably argue that Huskars don't need it, but he, he's yeah, but he's a he's a good force multiplier as well. Um, so yeah, I think he's just all around good prime. I wouldn't say he's one of the best. It's a lot of points, and I think quite often you rely on your Primark to kill their Primark. Um, mm. Yeah, and and he, he's maybe not he's maybe not the best job at that. But I think what we're seeing now is we're seeing Primarks with quite specific roles, and you have to tune your army to play towards that. And what he's amazing for is. Standing stoically and just crushing enemy elite infantry. Yeah. He's awesome. Man alive. I hadn't realised quite how good he was, so I'll give him a run out um, the next time I play Imperial Fist. So that's, that's brilliant. Right, Lee, let's go over to the uh, to Sigismund. And do you want to talk us through um, uh, the Black Sword himself, please? 
Yes. Uh, so this is all out of fucking order, isn't it? Um, so Sigismund, 230 points, movement seven, weapon skill seven, ballistic skill four, strength four, toughness four, wounds four, initiative five, attacks four, leadership ten, two plus. Uh, he's got iron halo, uh, black sword, mastercrafted bolt pistol, fragment crack grenades, and then a whole fuck ton of special rules. It's got more than special, more than special uh, rule, I think. He? It's got more um, than space wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Canal Fearless, Eternal Warrior, Adamantium Will. Um, Precision Strikes 3 Plus. Holy That's great. Shit. That's really, really good, that. And Shock and Horror, he's a loyalist. Um, <laughs> so Warlord, Slayer of Kings. If chosen as the army's Warlord, Sigismund automatically has the Slayer of the Kings as his special, as his Warlord trait, and may not select any other. Uh, if Sigismund is the army's warlord and slays the enemy warlord in a challenge, Sigismund's controlling player gains plus one victory points in addition to any gains by mission objectives and all units in the same army as Sigismund that include at least one model of the Legion of the Starters Imperial Fist Special Rule may add plus one to the total number of wounds caused in each combat for the purpose of determining assault results for the rest of the battle. This does not stack with any other rules that increase the assault result. Right. In addition, an army with Sigismund as its warlord may make an additional reaction during the opponent's movement phase, as long as Sigismund has not been removed as a casualty. Okay. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Interesting in movement one, just to get you closer to the enemy, I assume. Yeah, it's strange, um, isn't it? I would have guessed assault. But... Well, this, this is why it's... But I, I think the big movement is excellent over assault because it's getting you closer. You know? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. You're playing sense. Templar Assault. It means you, you can move those two land raiders. You can either, you know, you've got two land raiders then to either move back to keep them alive or yeah. move them forwards um, you know, to, to get into the heart of the enemy. Also means. Well, know, if if I did come within 12 inches of a land raider, how, how far can it move towards me now? Six also. inches. Oh shit! Okay, in my head I had it as four, but I'm thinking probably just of um, no, so vehicles. Oh, it's just flat surface. Okay, shit. Okay, that's, yeah, that's that's yeah. okay. And yeah. and vehicles as well. It's not towards or away from. It's just pivot, move anyway. six. So oh, right. mm. you, you, it's behind cover or wherever you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. Okay, cool. I um I feel like depending on who your warlord is, you're probably not putting him in a challenge with fucking Sigismund. Yeah, so just yeah. you decline the challenge, guys. Like so. Yeah, I yeah, like that was the way to shut him down previously because all his attacks didn't have instant death. But I think that's now, but now he's changed, changed, uh, changed a little bit. So that leads us nicely to his special rules. Uh, so Harry, do you want to uh, carry on? Give us the special sure. rules. Sure. Nice. Um, so death champion, uh, any unit he joins gains a bonus of plus two to all charge distances oh. and sweeping advance rolls made in the unit. So oh. that is just. Brilliant. That's In addition, uh, if Sigismund is president of the detachment, then you may take ten block breaking squads as troops' choices. So there we go. So you don't, so you don't have to take the that right of war if you don't. No, have to. no, no, okay. no, exactly. So it is yet another character that is oh, interesting that un unlocks something. As, as but they're troops. not gaining line, are they? They're not gaining line. No. So oh, this wow. is before how how you know you used to be able to make a make oh. an all templar. It means you've, you've lost the crutch of having to take Sigismund now. So damn it. Uh, there's, find, there's an excuse to not take it. Just... I find this really interesting because a lot we said this briefly, but a lot of the characters who could previously take things as troops yeah. now can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know why. They fucking, that in uh, every Imperial Fist character seems to. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it means that you, you you can you can stack this with some really really yeah, good stuff. Because yeah. um, like like obviously I play word bearers. Zardu used to be able to take um, Ash and Circle as troops. And now he can't at all. It's it's not. Yeah. It's weird that some can and some can't. But so you, anyway, sorry. Yeah, you, you, know, you you can stack that with. Um, I thought it'd be really cool. You could do like subterranean assault, and just yeah. have like, all templars in in, in in termites that when they they jump out, you they yeah. can then charge in the opponent's turn and stuff like that. And you don't need to line if everything's dead. Yeah, exactly. I, I must say, I think that. The Imperial Fists have disproportionately been a given a lot of love when it comes to army building. Absolutely. I think that the oh, yeah. you can do so um, much with it. Can't yeah, yeah, really interesting. Um, Sorry, next 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 Dolores Fighter. So uh, again, this is something that's kept that's quite nice. When, uh, when a challenge is issued, the combat includes Sigismund. The Sigismund controlling player must always accept that challenge for Sigismund. If the opposing player does not issue a challenge, the Sigismund must have to do so. Nominate Sigismund to fight that challenge. 
when fighting the challenge, successful involves taken against Sigurd and must be re-rolled. So this is actually one of his most annoying, you know, um, it's, it's, it's one of the best, one of the worst. So against fighting a Praetor, you know, having to re-roll successful involves against him is just, it's such a kick in the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially when, you, when they're like, oh, I've made it three, four up in balls. I'm like, great, please. Right. <laughs> um, but the, 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 the pain is this having to accept challenges. And now it stakes, you know, you know the opponent, um, the person charging, the person who's turning is having to do challenges first. I think that's right. It, it means that you you can clutch Sigismund out of combat by, um, let's say, you have a warlord and a, and a sergeant. The sergeant can issue a challenge, take Sigismund out of the combat effectively. Yeah, whilst your yeah. opponent's wall could, could, could march through, so uh, that's why I took Nemesis bubbles anyway. Um, <laughs> so the black sword is 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 is, uh, is this weapon that we want to love. Plus two strength, AP two, melee two handed, instant death, mastercrafted. So that has now gained instant death and mastercrafted since the last edition. Um, so yeah, he, he, just just a monster. So he he can kill infantry nicely now because he's only getting instant death and challenge. Um, so he's, he's just an absolute monster. He always has been. He, with Eternal Warrior, having flat instant death, people having to reroll successful involves his weapon skill seven. Only initiative five, it's a slight downside, and only having four attacks with a two handed weapon. Um, sometimes he, he can he can whiff. Yeah. Um, it's happened a few times. Um, if, yeah. he, if he's fighting other weapon skill seven characters, sometimes. Yeah, he's going to struggle a little bit, isn't he? Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself just getting a hit. Um, but he's just a monster. He never dies. It's um, the Eternal Warrior, I think, is the thing that really yeah. um, makes him special. And Precision Strikes, strikes three pluses, this is just excellent. Yeah. That's something that um, I don't know if we've come before when we talk about Dawn. I wanted to, I, that made me realise that it's something that a lot of people forget with Primarchs. It's the additional rule they've added to Primarchs now, where Primarchs can allocate attacks to whoever they want in a challenge. In, in, a, cha- in, in a challenge? In a, com- in a combat, sorry. Oh, right. Okay, thanks. So Primarch can sweep into a squad and say, kill that sergeant, that pat fist guy, that pat fist guy. Excellent. Um, his warlord trait is one th- one thing I will mention. Is like it's and I and as well as dawn the plus one to combat res and not stacking with any with other mm. combat. Mm. Yeah. Not stacking with other rules. I think that's a bit weak. Yeah. Because um, everyone takes vexillas. Yeah. I, I also think plus one VP for killing the opponent's warlord. I don't think is a lot. I think it probably should be D three. Yeah. Um, especially with um headhunter Leviathan and retribution. Uh, whatever the Raven God one is, you just get two for killing the warlord. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But that's a that's a right of war. Not yeah. A trait. So it it's it's a very cool warlord trait. Um, and, and yeah. It's quite a thematic, but I think you've got to work hard to be able to get into combat with the opponent's warlord and yeah, then, and actually get. It's it's just another reason why that he, he, they're never going to accept the challenge of the warlord. Yeah, so it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just to deny that VP. Interesting character, still a pain, but I think for me, it all comes down to the Eternal Warrior more than any other particular rule because it's just so difficult to get rid of him. Right, let's have a goosey gander at I think it's Alexis Pollock or is it Fafnir Ran? Alexis Pollock. Oh. So, uh, really interesting character in the novella Crimson Fist. If you've not managed to read it, go read it because it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, he comes in at uh, 185 points. So, he's uh, uh, far cheaper than Sigismund. Uh, he has movement seven, a weapon skill six, ballistic skill four, strength five, toughness four. So, he's unusual in the fact that he is strength five. Uh, he's got three wounds, initiative five, attacks three, leadership 10, and a two up save. Uh, he comes with an iron halo, uh, which is interesting, but he's also got a visual pattern storm shield. So um, I'm not quite sure what the rationale behind giving him both uh, both was there. Uh, but he comes with a solarite power gauntlet. Now, the solarite power gauntlet is just strength 10, so it doesn't at the moment matter that his strength is is five um, because it, it's just base strength uh, 10. He's got a combi melter and frag and crack grenades. Uh, special rules, uh, things to mention is Void Commander. We'll come to that in a bit. Uh, he comes with Deep Strike, which is brilliant. Hammer Blow, Master Tactician, and he's, of course, a Loyalist. He also has the Heavy Special Rule, which means he can't run, but he can re-roll that sweet two-up save against Blasts. Uh, so um, and he's, on, the he's slower, on the slower side as well. He doesn't take it away from squats as well, which I think is, is, is the key. 
That's good. Okay, so uh, Master Tactician, after all models are deployed, but before any roles to seize the initiative are made, the controlling player of Alexis Pollux may redeploy one friendly unit within the limitations of the mission being played. This may place a unit that's being deployed normally into reserves or bring a unit out of reserves, but may not add or remove units that have been assigned to keep strike assault, drop pod assault, flanking assault, or subterranean assault. In addition, an army of the Alexis Pollux as well may make an additional reaction during the opponent's assault phase, as long as Alexis Pollux has not been removed as a casualty. So not the best wall or trait, not the worst. Gives you some tactical flexibility, but there are, I think, that the Imperial Fist ones, generic ones, are just better on the on the whole. There. Uh, Void Commander, the controlling player may opt to automatically pass <coughs> any pinning test made for Alexis Pollux and any unit he has joined. In addition, all models in a unit that Alexis Pollux joins while in reserve... Uh, gain the deep strike special rule. Okay, so that's good. So you can save some points there if you want to attach him to a um, a Terminator squad. Um, you can uh, save some points, 25 points there, because uh, you just give that unit deep strike. Um, Beastie so, command squad with him or something. Yeah, yeah that would work, because he's got Master of the Legion, so he can take a command squad, so that, that works quite well. And he can opt to automatically pass or fail any pinning test, so that's, I think, really, really useful as well. I can't think of many reasons why you might want to fail a pinning test unless you really want to um, run away or just, you know, hunker down, I guess, mm. but... Um, yeah, the passing it automatically is great. Hammer Blow. During any fight subphase, Alexis Pollock's controlling player may choose to have Alexis Pollock make a single attack with the profile below instead of attacking normally. While using this option, Alexis Pollock may not gain bonus attacks for charging additional weapons or for any other special rules. So it is strength 10, AP 1, melee, armor bane, flesh bane, exo shock, 6 up. So flesh bane, is that wound on a 2 up or a 3 up? 2 up, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mm, yeah, you've got some decisions to make there because the uh Solarite Power of Gauntlet is already at strength 10 AP one. The armor bane might be useful, I guess, and the extra shot might be useful. It feels something that you would use against the vehicle over um over uh, over dudes, but yeah, you yeah, because yeah. you're hitting on a two up against a vehicle, can't you? So you probably try against a vehicle, but I don't see you using it. No. much else I'd rather have this three strength 10 AP one attacks yeah anyway. yeah because yeah. um, he's yeah, only skill six so, so he, he might be hitting on fours quite a lot of the time and things yeah against something interesting yeah hammer blow mm, yeah I suppose you might get lucky but there's a lot of ifs and buts in that um in in if that. it was master crafted that would be quite cool um, yeah 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 okay but I still think with the solarite power corner it's it's still fucking awesome so yeah, you but I think for me I just prefer the extra attacks rather than the yeah flesh bang one. Cool. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So I think we've got uh Fafnir Rand. So this one has got a fuck ton of rules. So Harry, why don't you do the um his these bits here and then Lee can do the special rules? Sure. So uh yeah, Fafnir Rand. He's 175 points, um, so he's a nice, cheap character. Mm -hmm. He's movement 7, weapon skill 6, physical 5, uh, shed 4, toughness 4, 3 <laughs> wounds, high 5, 4 attacks, which 10, to save, so a, a semi-praetor. Um, he's got Tiffy armor, uh, an iron halo, and a boarding shield, mm. um, so so that's interesting, so you can switch mm. between using iron halo and boarding shield. Yeah, interesting. Um, and the headsman the hunter, which is this iconic paired axis. Uh, and it is, and it is to switch between the two right within the right of war because you can re-roll the re-roll is five plus or take his four right. plus yeah yeah so interesting interesting um so uh special rules uh i need to look up a lot look as well when, when police talking if he gets the plus one from the fountain water squad I'll double check that. I, I think he does but i think it's in his um Oh, is it okay? In the, in the later rules, I think, but we'll so have, he, have to have a look. He's got Master Legion, he's in behind character, Shield Master Executioner's Tanks, he's got Hammer of Wrath, um, and the Unbroken Wall is a special wall of trait, um, and he is Loyalist only. Um, so his wall of trait, Unbroken Wall. Um, all models of any breach of scores or fungus water scores in the same detachment gain a bonus of plus one to weapon skill for duration of any assault phase, which they successfully charge an enemy unit. In addition, an enemy. An army with Fafnir Ryan as its ward uh, is an additional reaction to players' assault phase. Um, so that's really cool. Bear in mind, it's only when you charge those. So if you've got stone ball, but you're not getting all pre rolls, if you do choose to charge him in, get your plus one. Uh, but it means that with your Fafnir's warders, you're pretty much always going to be weapon skill five. Yeah. 
so that stacks really nicely just with the phalanx warders rules but also with the um with the right of war as well okay interesting right lee do you want to talk us through the uh his special rules because there's a hell of a lot of them Something yes so executioner's tax when an enemy unit makes a successful charge that places one or more enemy models in base contact with fafnaran or any model in a unit Fafnaran has joined, that enemy unit suffers D3 plus 3, strength 5, AP dash hits. These attacks hit automatically and are resolved during the fight subphase at initiative step 10, but grant no model a piling move and do not benefit from any special rules that Fafnaran or any other model in the same unit may have. Hits inflected by this special rule are allocated as normal for attacks made in an assault. Um, it's fair enough, isn't it? Just it's really good. It's, it's, three it's, strength it's, five attacks. Here's, here's, some, here's some attacks. See, see, oh, 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 by the way, I do this first. Yeah, it's just a cool little kick in the teeth, which is very, it's very yeah. Fafni Rand, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Shieldmaster, when Fafni Rand is locked in combat and his controlling player has chosen to use the single axe profile for the headsman and the hunter in that phase, all hits inflicted by enemy models and allocated to Fafnaran must reduce their strength by minus one to a minimum of one. Fuck me. Okay. In the twinned axe profile for the headsman and the hunter, this special rule grants no benefit. Fafnaran is not counted as having a boarding shield for any rules that would grant him benefits for having a boarding shield, and Fafnaran may ignore the usual restriction for using a weapon with the two-handed special rule while also having a board in shield until the end of that assault phase. Yeah, this is really weird, isn't it? Because yeah, um, well, it, it, it's 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 just so good because he's got that bonus on strength. I did just, I did just double check the, the the phalanx waters, which we'll go on to later. He he does get the bonus of, yeah. of his plus one involve, so mm -hmm. it means that he's going to be there with his four re-rollable involve, um, with with minus one um, strength. So so in effect, he, he becomes battle harder, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, but but to, to a more so because you're actually not wounding him if you want that thing. So that is just fantastic. And then his, his twin axes, mm -hmm. he can just just go to town on people if he wants to. Um, yeah, I think you'd be you'd be making a mistake if you were not running Fafnir Ran in um, Stone Gauntlet. Like, what are you what are you doing? You know, if you had a choice between Alexis Pollock and Fafnir Ran in Stone Gauntlet, take both. Take Fafnir, well, yeah, take both, but take Fafnir Ran. Like. Even I'd be really interested to see what the stats would be against Sigismund and Fafnir. Um, if if you've got Fafnir ran in a Phalanx Water squad with an apothecary in a challenge, he's just got charged. Like I like because he must be insanely survivable if he's able to re-roll that in one. And then the strength of the weapon is at minus one as well, because I'm assuming that will change the instant death thresholds as well on a lot of things. Um, and I'd just be really interested to see the numbers on it, because for 175 points, he seems like a fucking steal. Yeah, and then, like you say, then you can have to feel no pain and, and things on top of that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking nuts. Like, he, it's crazy. Right, should we go with the uh, Headsman and the Hunter? Uh, so Fafnaran's power axes, the headsman and the hunter, are considered a single weapon with two profiles, one representing Fafnaran using a single axe in concert with his shield, and one representing Fafnaran using both axes at once. In each fight subphase, Fafnaran's controlling player must choose one of these two profiles to use for all of Fafnaran's attacks. Note that the shield master special rule allows Fafnaran make use of a weapon with a two-hand special rule despite having a boarding shield. Okay. Uh, both weapons are counted as power weapons for those rules that affect such weapons. So, single axe, strength plus two, AP two, melee, shield master, specialist weapon, and master crafted. Twin axe, plus one strength, AP two, melee, rampage two, specialist weapon, two handed, master crafted. Interesting. Okay. The rampage is, uh, the rampage is interesting, I think. Um... Yeah, he's got a lot of rules that you need to read very carefully to make yeah. sure you don't forget anything. But what is quite clear is that they stack with a whole fucking bunch of um, uh, Templar Brethren and that Stone Gauntlet thing. That what I want to see is is someone charge into him and he does his D three plus three strength five attacks, and then you remove the casualties next to him so he doesn't get his rampage. Oh, interesting. Oh, no, it's Reaping Blow, isn't it? That, that would be that sort of normal. Yeah. I, I just double-checked as well the Heart of the Legion rule. It's mm. 
of that plus one to feel no pain is mm. um, any model in the unit if it has heart the legion. So ah. he would also get that. So this guy with a unit of 20 phalanx warders uh, and an apothecary on an objective in Stone Court. But it, that's it not, be it's not going anywhere. wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be going. absolutely unstoppable. It's not um, unstoppable. And he has teeth to kick back with. He's AP2 yeah. at initiative. Um, yeah. Four attacks, web skill six, which will be seven. Uh, which will be, yeah, he'll be seven, won't he? Yeah. Um, brilliant. Woo. Awesome. Yeah, he's a cool character. And he's dirt um, cheap. And he's, he's fucking dirt cheap for what he does, but he yeah, really is. stacks stacks so well with all those other things. But if you're taking, uh, even if you're not taking him as a warlord, uh, he's probably worth taking just, you know, just taking. Uh, anyway, God, within the yeah. same order, I think. Um, yeah, okie dokie. Right, let's have a look at the next unit. So, Templar Reverend. So, they've got not that many rules, um, but they, they've got, uh, they don't need it, do they? Because they've got a host of weapon and war grade okay, um, gear options, um, and then their stat line is pretty impressive as well. So, they come in for just normal five guys at 150 points. Now, the um, I will read the things that are similar and then I'll talk about the attacks in a bit. So, Brethren and Champion, uh, Movement 7, Weapon Skill 5, fucking amazing for an elite unit. Uh, Ballistic Skill 4, uh, Strength 4, Toughness 4, two wounds apiece, which is an upgrade, Harry. On the, I think there were only one wound apiece last time. And the champion yeah, like, like a lot of other veteran veteran units, they have a yeah. And a wound. So um, they're really good. Initiative four attacks two for the brethren and three for the champion. So for your your champion is basically just a centurion within the unit, I think, because he's leadership nine and then he's got two up uh, two up save as well. He's just missing a that sweet um, refractor feel, basically. Uh, they come with artificial armor. They come with power swords. Power swords, I found, are much better now because they've got the rending. I'm not sure about you, Harry. Have you found that they're just better because they they rend now? Yeah, I, th I think that's that's still a little bit of a trap. Um, everyone, the rending six plus. It, yes, it does come up every now and again, but it, it is probably um, as they were. You, know, you can't take mass AP two in the squad, but yeah, um, yeah they, they, it's still a really nice option. Yeah, uh, they've got. Um, Imperial Fist Special Rule, Furious Charge, so they've got plus one strength, which is really nice because it helps with the sword, and they've got the Crusader Rule as well. Now, uh, they for each additional Brethren, is 25 points per model. I think uh, you're probably going to want to ma max out the squad to uh, 10 guys and put them in a... Um, ideally, put them in a uh, Proteus. Um, they've got 25 points for Melter Bombs. I, for me, I probably wouldn't take Melter Bombs on them, Um just because they're really an anti-infantry force, but I think that there's an argument to be made for 25 points for 10 guys. It's probably worth... Uh, worth I, uh, them. I think it's worth it. That just makes them a double threat. They're a threat to infantry. They're a threat to vehicles, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, I can I've, understand that. The character is 10 points. So I've always run them with, with mounted bombs, especially before when dreads were vehicles. It was an yeah. absolute no-brainer. Now it's slightly less so, but I think if you're if you're running a, a, a very Puritan Templar assault force with lots of, you know, three or four units of Templars, yeah. you're going to want these to deal with... Um, you're going to want these to deal with vehicles? Okay, because cool. your, your land raiders are probably the things that are going to be shooting them with dreadnoughts. Cool. Um, okay. So I, yeah. I think I think it's still worth it, but 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 quite pricey. But only only if you're taking them in ten man and, and yeah. any vessels in the squad. Yeah. Uh, combat shields. So two points each. Now combat shields have been given a debuff because they're only six. Uh, six yeah. aren't they in Vun now? So they're not quite as good as they previously were. Uh, any model in the unit may change its bolt pistol for a plasma pistol for ten points each, which is interesting. That will get rather pricey if you decide to max out on that. Uh, one brethren may take a nuncio box. One brethren will take a vexilla. Probably worth it. Uh, worth taking I think uh, the champion may exchange their sword for a power fist for 5 points or a solarite power gauntlet for 10 points or a thunder hammer for 10 points I, I think it's not before I would have taken the solarite power gauntlet no no issue I think it's a bit of a toss up now whether you want a thunder hammer or a solarite power gauntlet for the brutal on the thunder uh, um, I, th yeah. I think the solarite is still the number one option because you get the plus one attack you reckon? I think so. So I think I think on terminators it's more of a toss up because the melee doesn't matter. But I think on this because it's so like on this melee. Interesting. What about uh, against uh, dreadnoughts? And would you the thunder hammer not be a bit better? 
I think you're just fucked anyway. So <laughs> okay, yeah, fair <laughs> fair play, fair around that, so. yeah. Uh, and a champion may take an architect pistol, uh, and then the champion may upgrade one of its weapons to become master crafted as well. So uh, you know, making the solar up power of previously what it was. Uh, I probably wouldn't pay the ten points for master crafted. No, you pay yeah. for it, Harry, for ten points. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. That, so. so a pretty cool unit not loads of uh special rules like we've seen so far with fucking faffing around with a, a whole page of special rules uh but they are hardy strong with two wounds apiece and um they are really good in close combat especially yeah. combined with solar uh solar martial right of war as yeah. well only thing i would like to have seen is them to be able to be taken as a retinue for citizen yes that. that that would have been pretty cool right yeah, that would have been good, uh, yeah. uh to get cool. let's go to the uh let's go to the next one so uh, right so harry you know more about this one than uh than me and Leah. i've not run these so but but you have so why don't you take us through uh yeah so this this was included in a um in one of the exemplary battles it was i think it was one of the first wasn't it um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Quite a while back, so, so they were in one point for a long time, uh, and now they, they've they're, they're back now in PDF. So first thing to think about before you guys make these is it's still up in the air whether events are going to be using these these guys mm. a lot. I think the consensus is yes. Um, uh, they, they will use these. Um, so these guys are basically a, 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 a super command squad. Um, so zero to one option, two hundred seventy five points for five dudes. So pretty pricey um, for your for your terminators um uh, and they've got you know, elite terminator stat line so web skill five great they're two wounds um and they each eight and nine uh with you two attacks one thing to note is the huskull master doesn't get three attacks which is uh, an interesting one um so they come stop with power weapons and visual storm shields um uh and their special rules they are stubborn uh relentless bulky um iron ball work which is one of the special rules huskull retinue and they get deep strike base so you've got the deep strike already in there you've got stubborn over inexorable which is, is just better um and then their iron ball work special rule so you can uh, bump the unit up to 10 dudes at 50 points each so they are very very expensive but then when you factor in the fact that they just come with a visual storm shield when they come um... with a visual storm shield yeah they yeah uh, they're, 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 they're not too bad as well and they get the deep strikes really good yeah. as well especially when you bump yeah. that squad to 10 it's well yeah. worth it um, but obviously they're 60 points each because you give them a solo gauntlet for 10 points of course of course um, yeah. so bear in mind that you can't give this squad thunder hammers or power fists and things because yeah. this isn't the terminate squad this is their option they can have power yeah. weapons mm. or solo rights right um, you can take a couple of times but but um Iron Bulwark, so this is their special rule. Uh, if they are not locked in combat, so they're stood in the open and they get charged, they gain battle hardened one. Um, that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Because it means they're not getting instant killed out by yeah. Thunder Hammers, Power Fist, Thunder Strength 8. Um, and then Huskar Retinue. Um, so it's just the long winded normal retinues rule, but it basically means you can take them as a command squad for. Uh, Master Legion, Imperial Fist, they don't get the option of taking a banner. Um, and baseline, they don't have an option of taking Vexillas or Valancios or anything like that. So they're quite a bare bones unit. Mm -hmm. But I mean, give them a solo gauntlet, deep strike them in, send them in. Um, and, and, yeah, and, and they're, they're, they're just absolute. Can I, um, so this is an HQ choice and it's a zero to one choice could you... um i don't think this is a hq choice oh right I this oh, is leads, leads to me, is okay. i think leads, leads... it's a it's a, it's it, a... They, they, they become part of hq if you take them as a retinue but they are an elite choice oh okay cool uh, they, they are, so um they are clearly better than taking a command uh, sorry than taking a normal terminate squad over a um uh, that's all tooled up to the nines. Oh, they are an HQ choice, that's fine. Ah, they are an HQ choice. Fucking mouth. Okay, so let me go back to my original question. So, what is yeah, the HQ choice? And the, the, so these could be taken as your warlord, and the Herskar Master would be the warlord then. Right, yes, yeah, that's right. Because he's yeah, the one with the. He, so I'm trying to think if I've run an illegal list now where I've had three characters. <laughs> oh, no, because I just had Dawn. No, it's okay. I'm okay. Um, that's very interesting, yeah. 
So wow, I, didn't, I, 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 I never. So that could be your. That. that could be your. You, if you wanted to do something completely wacky, you could uh, you use that as, uh, as. So your Huskar master could be your um, your your war, warlord. But you, if you didn't want to take any characters, you could just take these guys instead. Maybe. So that means you could take these guys as your HQ and just give the Huskar master. Um, so so, so the marshal, right? Yeah. Fuck. That's right. Right. That's yeah. a bit stupid. But anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so these I, I think what's matters. great about that though, as well, is that if you're taking Rogel Dawn, and you're just like, oh, well, I don't really want to take a an HQ, an HQ, because there's no point. You just take Dawn, and then these guys fill the. And I think I suspect that's probably the the rationale behind making them a, a, an HQ choice. No, that's um, my bad. I always thought they're an elite, so I'm like, uh, they, they do seem an awesome awesome unit. I if, think- I Definitely. think when they first did the rules for these for 1.0, they were elite. And then when they re released the updated version for 2.0, I think it was changed then to HQ. Right. right. Okay. I think that's where the confusion. Yeah. Was. Just take them. They're awesome. Just they a are... solid unit. I mean, yeah. then you're going to be charging them a lot of time. And, yeah, all that's different between them and a, and a command squad is, is that Iron Bulwark rule. Yeah. Um, so. If, if you only want to have like five guys, I would maybe argue that a command squad's better because they get line. But if okay. you want that that murder truck ten man squad, take these guys. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. And also the command squad comes with the banner though as well, right? So that's what. Yeah. So so the, the command a, a squad of five guys. You could do a, a command squad in Tartarus with Vigil Storm Shields and a yeah. banner. So yeah. They can, run, they can run about on their line, uh, and I would probably take that over these guys. Okay. Um, but if you want just that block of destruction yeah this is good to these, these, these are the one okay so if you think about five run a command squad if you think about 10 run these guys simple easy cool uh, or if you're running regular dawn take these guys as your compulsory hq and then just take dawn as your warlord and you're in your lord of war choice awesome right let's have a look at phalanx warders next i think so uh these are a fat these are a fast attack uh, option and they were a fast attack option last time as well uh, so we've talked about them quite in depth but actually let's have a look at their actual rules so um movement seven well they come in at a whopping i think 225 points so they are i think they're quite kind of expensive uh, especially yeah. when you just compare with them with the last unit we've just had a look at but um so the movement seven weapon skill four ballistic skill four Strength four, toughness four, wounds one a piece. Uh, it's unusual it's... seeing that seeing that now. I think um, initiative four, attacks one and then attacks two for the water sergeant and leadership eight and leadership nine and then three up save. Uh, they come with a bolter, a bolt pistol, and a power axe. So they come with the power axe and the bolter. So you've got some versatility there. Uh, they come with a boarding shield, their grenades, a breacher charge. Uh, as well somebody will maybe have to have a look at that for me because i'm not entirely breacher breach charges and then they come with power armor uh they are heavy so they can't run uh but they can re-roll their um their armor saves against blasts uh they've of course got the imperial face special rule they've got the shield wall and the lock step uh they can take a rhino transport which is unusual to see that from version one because they've obviously got Breach shells, but it's a nice cheap transport choice for them. Uh, if you want to run a rhino with them, uh, a termite assault drill or a land raider um, as well. But I think the for me, I think a rhino might be an interesting choice for them. It's but having them cool. on foot, fifteen or twenty man, probably is probably the most optimized if you're taking stone gold. It, it also unlocks a lot of the. Um... It also unlocks a lot of the rice of war where you can like change your rhino out for drop pods and things. Or Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So, so you, yeah, you can yeah. take these in subterranean assault, for example. Yeah, or orbital assault, right? You orbital can assault, yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Cool. Uh, so each phalanx border is worth 20 points uh, a piece if you want to add more. Uh, one in five. Every, so, yeah, so every five, they can either take a, a magna combi melter, minor combi melter, flame melter gun, plasma gun, thunder hammer. I think the problem with this, for me, is just that it, the points add up. But the... It, I suspect a thunder hammer might be one in one in five. Absolutely. Might be very good because you could potentially have five thunder hammers in the in a 20-man unit, which could be do absolute destruction. Um, Vexilla, take it. Uh, Nuncio Vox, mm, yeah, I'll leave that one up to you guys. A Phalanx Warder Sergeant may exchange their power fists, may exchange the 
um, the bolt pistol, bolter, or power axe for one of the following. So it's interesting, it's or. So they can have a power axe, a boarding shield, and a power fist as uh, as well on that. So they can have a power fist, plasma pistol, thunder hammer, or solarite power gauntlet. Uh, you can take a melter bomb on the sergeant. The sergeant can also say artist armor, and the entire squad can take melter bombs for 50 points per unit. I think it's only worth doing that if you are going to upgrade them to 20 man unit. Yes, yeah, Just whilst we're touching on that, preacher charges, um, mm. they're not quite the murder bombs they used no. to be. Okay. Um, it's now just a, an automatic strength to an AP2 hit. As initiative one against building fortifications, so it's actually what it's, oh, it's okay. for breaking doors open and setting and things, which is cool. really cool. Can't take down a, but can't take down a Aegis defense line. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> how how many breacher charges you put on an Aegis defense line, it will not. It will. It will. Never it, it's it's uh, like, um, it, it, it's like those um who's who games. Like yeah. Pop down and then it just like, pops <laughs> yeah, up exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the rules that we have kind of been talking about, and this will kind of put everything into context. I think so. Lockstep. If a unit includes at least six <laughs> models with a lockstep special rule, and is not locked in combat, all friendly models in that unit gain a, including those without the lockstep special rule. So that links back to what Harry was saying about uh, Fafnir Ren. Uh, gain a bonus of plus one weapon skill for the duration of any assault phase in which the unit is successfully charged by one or more enemy models. So they, if they get charged and there's three guys in that unit, then they are going to be weapon skill five. Um, so that that is great. That's really, really good. Um, and then shield wall models in this unit with boarding shields, which are in base or in base contact with at least two other models with boarding shields and are neither falling back or pinned may add plus one to their invun saves to a maximum of three up friendly models with the independent character special rule that have joined a unit of phallic waters also benefit from this special rule so long as the unit includes at least three models with the sp sp uh, shield rule special rule as well so that means the faffling ran also gets that that as well right because Absolutely. Yeah, because he has his boarding shield, which explains why he's got the iron halo and then the boarding shield as, as well. Um, add plus one to the inbound save. So, but, yeah. But so, Pollux, Pollux doesn't because he's only got a visual shield. He's only got a visual shield as well. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I, I, I think they missed a trick the visual and they should have count as boarding shields or, I don't know, yeah. two different ones. Yeah, yeah I it's, think it's, it probably it's... make Terminators a bit too strong, I think, though. I think there, yeah, because um, I suppose it's to a maximum of three up, but. Um, yeah, uh, basically, well, however you exactly the conversation we were having earlier, a 20 man squad of these with Fafnir Ran, with an apothecary, with Stone Gauntlet is going to it, it's impossible to shift them off a off a off a, really. So yeah, it's yeah. So what, it's, one thing I find really interesting with this unit is you said that they're quite expensive. Yeah. So 225 points for 10. So a breach of squad is 155 points. So for 70 points, you're getting lockstep, you're getting shield wall, and every single person's getting a fucking power. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I, I think when you put it into yeah. that, you think that's, I think just... that's actually and then you add it into some of the fucking ridiculous rights of war. Yeah. Like I actually think that you know, bang, really bang, well bang for bang for them. Yeah. I just see the two hundred. I think I'm um, just for a troops choice, or I think oh man, the yeah, eye wateringly expensive when compared to attack squad. Um, but they get all those things. Yeah, I, I, but I can understand the the point you're making. You, I mean, the problem is you're not going to have many points left uh, after you max out that unit or two of no. them. Um, you're really think, not going to have a lot left. I think so. the key with these is running them bare bones, isn't it? Don't start adding too much stuff because you don't fucking need to. Yeah, yeah. You want to, you want to, if you want to do twenty man foot slogging or ten man in a in a rhino or something. Yeah. Um, and then I wouldn't even put Tiffy arm on the on the ward sergeant. Well, well, with, maybe yeah, you I mean, with an apothecary or... though, do you really need it, right? I mean, you know, you're, you're re-rolling your four up in bun saves, and then you've got your five up feel no pain, uh, but four up feel so it's like. I'd give four, four, up, four up, right? So I'd give four of them thunder hammers for sure. I feel uh, like the uh, other than that, I would just completely leave it. Yeah. I feel like the fifty points for the melter bombs is it's a is, bit of a trap. Yeah, yeah, it's it seems very very expensive, doesn't it? But, Especially if you're going to take thunder hammers for a few, yeah, days, then you yeah. can deal with vehicles, right? But uh, 
yeah yeah okay well maybe that's a good good way to put it which is that you either go for the thunder hammers or you go for the bell bombs but don't go both because it's fucking mad and expensive so um yeah yeah a okay. hundred points on to, across two spots of melt bombs i mean you, you're halfway there to a deep striking terminal it's got the three chambers yeah 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 it's interesting right let's have a look at the next slide please Liu. so uh the last one and we're just as a cursory thing because i've i don't think i've ever seen this so the ASOS <laughs> yes uh it runs in at 800 points it's um dawn's pimp wagon um, I I don't know the current rules for um, for the Thunder Thunderhawk. Um, so I'm going to look moment. now, and I can do a little comparison. Yeah, a bit of comparison. So while Harry's looking at that, I will uh, tell you about this one. So it's movement 18, ballistic skill four, front side and rear armor is 12. Seems quite weak for a for a flying yeah. uh, flying tank. Uh, it's got a hull points nine and transport capacity of 32. Um, it is. A vehicle, it's got flyer, hover, lumbering, transport, and unique. It's got central line mounted turbo laser, four turret mounted heavy bolters, two uh, front mounted LAS cannons, six hell strike missiles, ramjet distraction grid, and a flare shield as well. Uh, it's of course got Imperial Fist, power of the machine spirit, so it can fire everything everywhere. Uh, assault vehicle, uh, transport bay, void shields, and the ATOS Pretoria. And the SSD has one access point on each side and one access point by the front wrap. Uh, and it can also take a front mounted macro bomb cluster. And a special rule an army that includes Regador may also include the ATOS DS. If the ATOS DS is included in an army in this way, a Regador must begin the battle embarked upon it as well. Uh, so, where before you had, um, you either had to kind of choose uh, Dawn or you know a lord of war um they're allowing you to unlock this within the laws of war and then you've got the primark in the in that as well um but that's a whole you're going to be playing this in a big point game right this this is a five thousand point yeah. kind of light game that you're going to be uh going to be playing harry is this much different from the from the normal thunderhawk Absolutely fucking nothing. So the normal Thunderhawk, it, it, it is exactly the same. There's nothing right. additional. The only thing you get additional here is a normal Thunderhawk is 685 points, but by the time you add the Turbo Laser Destructor, round up the diffraction grid and the flare shield on, it goes up to 875. So okay. all you're doing is just saving 75 points. Right? Okay, awesome. Okay, and then uh, and then you Dawn has to be uh, in Bart's Pony. So, yeah. so it's, you it's, actually lose a bit of tactical flexibility. Mm -hmm. so you, you save a bit of money for some melt bombs on your fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Right, let's have a look at the next one then, please, Lee. I think that's it, isn't that? Yeah, because uh, we're going to move on tactical. Just a brief summary for me. So ju we'll just go each through each person's uh, thoughts on that. But uh, I think when I can feel, if you are particularly Sons of Horus or other legions where they had special characters that unlocked um, uh, tr different units as troops, um, I can really see how other legions might feel a bit hard done to because the Imperial Fists seem like a really fleshed out legion with a whole raft of special characters that allow some really interesting and different builds. Now that really kind of matches with the fluff and exactly what Lee was saying, which is that these guys, when we did our law video were, were a almost a reactionary legion where they were used as reserves because they could do everything at any time and they could move quickly. So you can understand that. But I think for me, the Imperial fists feel like the rounded legion that perhaps the sons of Horus doesn't quite feel like. And I compare it to that one because I also run sons of Horus as well. And sons of Horus have lost a lot of interesting builds because of the way that their characters are now. So I think that it's great. Um, uh, kind of as an Imperial, Imperial Fist player, can, you look at that and go, wow, you've got a whole raft of different ways to build things, different special characters. But I think that if you're looking at it from the outside, I can really feel how some legions might be a bit like, oh man, like I wish I had the access to the, to the, um, to the different builds that the Imperial Fists have. Um, yeah. I, is that a sentiment shared by you guys or what do you think? Harry, let's start with you. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, quite, quite similar. I think that, let's say you took out Fafni around, you took out Fanks Warders and took out Stone Gauntlet, you've probably still got um, a fully fleshed out yeah. force uh, and, and rules. And I think they've got so much, they've just got so much depth in their rules that there's really no end of possibilities that you can take 
so many different types of armies and like you say list building options are great uh, but i just think they're a little bit let down by the fact that there is clearly one way to run them yeah that, uh, and, and that that's a shame because um they're, they're, they're just fantastic they have some really cool rules uh really cool units and they've just got a bit of everything there's so many legions like iron hands for example fantastically resilient but they don't have a hard hit in close combat legion that uh, unit you know um and, and there's quite a few rock paper scissors uh forces out there uh, and, and these aren't it they can just do do whatever so yeah. an amazing legion to start playing with because yeah you can run a combat army and then you can switch a few things around and it could be a shooting army and swap in some characters and it just changes the way it plays so yeah absolutely uh lee what are your thoughts from a kind of an outsider looking in um, yeah, I agree with everything, to be honest, everything you said, really. Um, just to kind of reiterate what you said about how their characters can take units, it's it's a bit of a smack in the face for other legions, to be honest. Like I say, um, as a word bearers player, there's literally no option for that at all. Yeah. Like, Apart from Argyle Tal that makes Gavel back troops. But <laughs> yeah, but who runs Argyle Tal? <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes him. Li- I think it makes him lying. I did. I did forget about that. Yeah, no, he can take Gal Wall back. But again, like, <laughs> sorry, <kick it. laughs> well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. It's salty about Zardy Lie, I guess, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, we're getting. Uh... Um, I yeah. Do they get? They don't get line though, do they? Gal Wall back. Uh, so you can take the take the right wall that makes some troops, and then Argo Toll makes some line. Oh, does he? Yeah, I don't know what you're fucking crying about then. No, yeah, go on, Lee. Where, where, where? Jeez, yeah. go open, open the word bearers rules. I, uh, <laughs> right. I don't run Nargle Tower, so I don't, I've never even looked at We'll do word bearers next so you know what's going, fucking going yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I like to be so. We'll, we'll get, someone, <laughs> get, get someone on that knows about that. I do, I do find it strange. All right. I mean, that's one character <laughs> in a list where yeah. you used to be able to take like Ashen Circle. <coughs> yeah. So I do like can no longer take Ashen Circle as. Truth. And lots of Primarchs can't unlock, like, unlock uh, Vets yeah. or things like that in the way that they used yeah. to do, right? So, and, like, um, Iron Warriors used to be able to unlock uh, Terminators. Yeah. Oh, that was so good, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but I think when when you have characters that unlocks units, and then you... that That's fine. And then you add in very good rights of war. It almost yeah. becomes fucking silly. Yeah. And if you only let certain legions do that yeah then it almost becomes unfair it's 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 i find it a bit weird i don't really know why they've done that but um yeah i like i've i've this is the first time i've looked through um the imperial fist rules to be totally honest with you and i really like them like i i get what you're saying that there's there's one way to run them that is like the most powerful way but i think they're good enough there's plenty of other ways. And there's so many options that you can kind of do what you want, really, can't you? Like, uh, I really do think that um, if you wanted to do an assault army, even that isn't a Templar assault army, if you wanted to do an assault Imperial Fist, I think you really could, and it would, wouldn't would be impossible to make it work. Um, yeah, you could do Master Spoilers and Spartans, and, and there's rules in there that help you with that. But even just the Phalanx Warders, like... Like I really like the idea of breaches, but breaches are breaches are good for sitting on an objective and not getting shifted off it. But they don't do anything else. Mm. They don't shoot particularly well, and they do fuck all in combat. Whereas, like you take your phalanx warders, they get imposter onto their shooting because of their their legion rule. So all right, they're only shooting bolt guns, but it's still better than your standard breacher squad. And they have fucking power axes. So now I think they're, they're only getting like one or two attacks in combat, but it's all AP2, you know what I mean? So even that unit, it does it so much better than mm. what just a normal breacher squad does. Mm. Um, yeah, I really like them. Like, uh, yeah, they, yeah. Cool. They're good. Well, yeah. I think there's not much more to say on them, really. I think we've covered it, and hopefully that's given you guys who are listening a really in-depth kind of review of the Imperial Fist uh, kind of Legion rules and how things stack and work together. So if you are struggling for ideas, hopefully this has helped you. But we are going to just spend the last 10 minutes 
doing a bit of a tactical review and more of a bit of a state of where Heresy's at. I went to, we and Harry went to an event, a doubles event um, uh, last week in London. Um, and what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to pose a question to both Lee and can Harry. I, uh, can I just interrupt? Yeah. Argul Tal only gives the unity joins line. Oh. oh so well. Shut the oh. fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm going to pose, I'm going to give my opinion, uh, or rather I'm going to pose a question to uh, Harry and Lee, and I want them to um, uh, give uh, their uh, kind of opinion on it uh, just in the last 10 minutes. So let's have a look at the first uh, first one, Lee. Uh, so my opinion, so let me just tell you about this one. So Nemesis Bolters, 72 inch range, uh, strength five, AP five, heavy one, rending five up sniper and pinning so my opinion on this is that combined with night fight uh and the debuffs to leadership overall nemesis bolters are too powerful harry what's your thoughts on that uh i would be inclined to disagree go for it Although I do think there are issues. I wouldn't say they're too powerful. I'd say they're very powerful. You tell us what your thoughts are. Tell us what the issues currently are for it. Um, so reasons for they're very good. I, I think it's very obvious. They've got a range of 72 inches. It's very easy to get night fighting on things, or scanners uh, and the like. They can sit at the back of the board and they can blink away. Vets can take them. Vets are relentless. Vets can move around and shoot them. They're auto weapons. Imperial Fist can hit, hit on two pluses with them. Um, they it, The weapon has the sniper rule in it, so no matter who the fuck is wielding it, it's 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 headshotting sergeants. Uh, and rending five plus is excellent because it rending means you can, you, you know, a third of everything that hits is wounding a dreadnought, it's wounding a primal, it's wounding yeah. whatever, whatever. Even it can even plink ruins of vehicles and, and stuff. And then it's pinning on top of that, which is the king rule. So yeah, they're excellent weapons. Now, reasons I think they're very, very expensive. Um, a 10 points model on most things is is massive. You know, a standard recon squad becomes like nearly 300 points. Mm -hmm. Vet squads become incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think people fall in a trap with putting them on vets and then vets want to be in combat, their weapon skill five, they've got two attacks and all that stuff, and they just end up being these units that are kind of shooting and doing okay at shooting, but not, not getting killed enough, uh, but not 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 um, getting in combat enough to do what their, their points are there for. So I think that's the only thing against them at the minute where I would say they're not too powerful is because mm. there are 10 points in model, and if, if you spam them across your whole army, mm. you, you could be spending three, 400 points on Nemesis Boulders in your army, which is mm. huge points cost. Mm. Um, and if you come across a, a, an army that's all rhinos or, the, or, you, or you can then take things to negate pinning, which people are now starting to do, they're now starting to realise, this is what I can do to, to negate pinning, to negate the sniper rule. Um, but I would say they do need changing. I wouldn't have the sniper on the weapon. I think that units should have the sniper rule. So, like headhunter teams have uh, precision shot four plus. I think recon squad should have new precision shot five plus. Vets shouldn't have that, so they're just hitting them with it. Um, and then keep if that makes sense. So, so just not. I, I think that makes perfect sense. I I I think that. Um... I suppose the weapon itself might not be the issue, but the rules around the actual yeah. gen general rules have made it an okay. issue. Um, so the I find that the lack of interaction on a five plus rending sniper hit yeah. extremely boring. In the way that I can't it. I can't. I can't even do a lookout, sir. Now because that's gone. No. And I think that the lack of interaction there has made it a boring weapon to kind of go go against. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's then compounded with issues around night fight and then debuffs to general bit debuffs to, to leadership. But I think for me, the lack of interaction with the with the Nemesis Bolter is the thing that I found frustrating. Lee okay. overpowered. So I've only ever played against these on recon squads. I've never played against them on veterans and it's teams of five. And my experience is they haven't done a huge amount. Um, you've got a team of five, two or three are going to miss. Of those three, you might get one five-plus rending. If it's going against a character, you're getting a, 
a save anyways, uh, uh, independent character, which is what I've always had. They're going after my warlord or something. Then I'm getting a four plus in one save anyways. Even if you fail it, it does one wound. I've they, they, In teams of five, they've just never really had much impact against me. I've I, To the point that I've kind of ignored recon teams because yeah, it, they're it, just it, plinking away and they're not really doing a huge amount. They're um, the, the trap, aren't they? That people take in small squads of five, man. But yeah, I, I think it's of ten. I could see these being horrendous, but then you're paying a hundred points for something that's a yeah. three plus armor save and cover save. Um, and the thing with the vets is, I don't really understand why they have relentless, anyways. I it's don't. Because, I think it's in order so they can use these. I think that's why they've got relentless. But if that is, then it's foolish because the thing that people got pissed off with vets in first edition was when they had a sniper vets, yeah. sniper, and they've essentially <laughs> yeah. gone and done it all over again, which yeah. is, you know. Well, I've used 10 more Dathan with these in, in, in the Alpha Legion, so they can get running four plus in one turn and their vets yeah. they around. And, and they're just, they are so, so, so good. Um, and I think that that is the biggest negative is, is, is what Rob's saying is that I mean negative play of not being able to do anything about it. The, the sniper rule has gone from six plus to just any shot. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I don't think it should be on the weapon. It should be no, I agree with that. I think that's it's an easy fix to it's just the, it's the skill of the unit though, isn't it? You know? And you put sniper and then a number on the unit, and then it's done. Like sniper recon team, sniper six plus, sniper five plus, whatever. Awesome. Uh, okay, well, that's that's been that's uh, really interesting. I hadn't realised they were quite so um, expensive. If you've got um, thoughts on the Nemesis Bolter, either as a user or somebody who has received Nemesis Bolt shots uh, on your sergeants to the face or your vexillas, then let us know below. We want to know your opinion about Nemesis Bolter. Next one, please, Lee. So uh, my question to you, I'll go with Lee first. Augury scanners are... Um, there are sorry, there are not enough restrictions on the use of augury scanners. So, for example, the range isn't restricted, uh, the points cost isn't enough, um, and the um, it doesn't affect your kind of your interceptor count as well. That what are your thoughts on that? I yeah I I if I'm honest, I think they're a bit daft. Like. <laughs> There are so many rules there that are so good. If you just took one of those rules on its own and gave it to a unit, it would be good. Yeah. But but you're stacking all these rules on top of each other. You're stopping infiltrate. Uh, you're ignoring 24-inch line of sight and night fighting rules. You know, you can um, do the interceptor reaction and it doesn't cost a reaction. It's fucking insane. But... My, I think the thing for me, the biggest thing for me, is how easily accessible they are. You can mm -hmm. just stick them on any squad. If it was only like tech marines that could take these, mm. then you're actually paying for them. Or they need to do something, don't they? They either need to fact the rules, or they need to just stop handing augury scanners out to every single person. Because I just think it's yeah. I just think they're too easy. I just think yeah. it's like, well, why would you not take it? Stick it on a squad, fucking boom, done. Like, yeah, but five or ten points, whatever it is. Uh, is whereas a if you had to pay for a tech marine, that's 60 points, then you're paying for this, that's what 70, 75 points, whatever it is, mm. and you're taking up an elite slot. Then you really have to start thinking, is this fucking worth taking up an elite slot, paying this points? You know, it. It, at least there's an element of a decision there with these at the minute as they are at the minute i feel like there's no decision you just fucking take it don't you just stick it in why not yeah that that's good thanks lee uh harry your thoughts on it um yeah so i like the idea that more squads can take all scanners you see in the books that everyone's looking at the all specs and, and whatnot but they are just too too powerful for what they do um i would just change a few things with them i think that the biggest thing is the intercept reaction just getting a free reaction i'd like to see it that an all scanner unlocks the ability to use the interceptor yeah. reaction okay. but use that but that interceptor reaction still requires a point so a normal squad without an augury scanner can't intercept yeah. a squad with an augury scanner can but it costs a point of your shooting reaction a movement reaction that would be fine for that um and then the line of sight for i i, I think that's good i think the other two 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 rules work um i think 
infiltrate is really powerful at the minute because it's been reduced now so you can infiltrate to nine inches away um so august kind of like a nice a nice little counter to that so i i don't think that's two, two rules are too bad maybe you'd put one of them maybe add one of those rules onto the nuncio so the nuncio is a bit more worth taking mm -hmm. um but I, I i i like them i like the access and scores i like more walkie options and scores this modeling opportunity but i just think the intercept reactions is just it's just too too huge it's too interesting much. so as it stands at the moment harry how much how many points do you think an Ori scanner is actually worth in comparison to what you're actually paying? 20, 25. 25. 25 would make you think carefully about whether or not you would take yeah, it. Yeah, 20 probably was. I probably would stop taking them on tap rings at 20 points. Okay. But even at 30 points, it would still be an auto include on head weapon teams. Yeah. Okay. And Lee, how much, how many points would you kind of be like, mm, you know? kind of few how many points I mean, is... as the rules are at the minute i think there needs to be about 30 points mm. um okay. i mean my the only thing i would say with the infiltrate the 18 inches is in the first edition i used to run um uh, yeah and you could yeah. completely shut down if you're playing raven guard and they're relying on infiltrate you can completely mm. shut down their entire army and actually, it becomes a negative play experience because your opponent's entire army, its whole purpose is to infiltrate, and you've stopped to infiltrate in. That, that was their legion rule. It's like, cool, you no longer have a legion rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only thing I'd say with the 18 inches is it kind of can potentially just completely fuck over your opponent's army. That it's it's a hard one, isn't it? So like, a few few points. Uh, so I um, I think that they. They definitely need a points increase to 20, 25 points. But I think that the range on the intercept also needs to be looked at as well. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, but what I find more fascinating is the history of the Aubrey Scanner, which is it just seems that the Aubrey Scanner has never been something they've been able to get right. Yeah. Um, and I I question why that, that is the case. Um, and I, you know... I do wonder, you know, why on earth vehicles don't have access to these scanners? You know, they are vehicles, you know, built in computers, presumably, and things like that. And I think that um, the obvious choice is just to put them on heavy weapon scene. And I think the thing is that it's just so obvious that they put them on that there's not, exactly as you said, Lee, there's not, a, there's not a choice. And with the list building, list building needs to involve an element of choice and decision making, but the augury scanner as it currently stands, there is no choice. You just take it. And if, you don't take, and if you don't take it, you are going to be severely hampered against the opponent who does take it. And I think that it's just, I, I think that it needs to go either go up, access needs to be limited, or it needs to be uh, the range on it needs to be limited. But something needs to happen. What worries me is that it, like, there's, it won't be fact in this, in the, no. in the upcoming fact. I, 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 I think if, I think those rules could actually stay exactly as they are, but what needs to change is the intercept and the night fighting rules. Both of those. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Cool. Okay, that was a digital discussion. And our third thing oh. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> is that um, the debuffs, so my question is, uh, or my statement is, debuffs uh, to your army during night fight are uh, too much. Harry, let's start with you. <laughs> um, I completely agree. Again, it's it's no now people have started to play the game. It's no longer a choice to take searchlights and everything, and all the scanners and everything. Um, and and that's it. People like Night Lords are just insane. Their prey sight, boom, awesome. Um, Marines shouldn't be that scared of the dark. The leadership should only be for <coughs> solar orcs and, 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 and mooks like that. Uh, the line of sight kind of works. I, I, I get that. Um, and barrage weapons. Yeah, I I, I I get that. But the leadership thing's pretty huge. Um, and the fact that it's just on a, it's just on a two up straight away. Like, I, why am I always fighting in the dark? Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> what the fuck? Did, what, did no I, battles I, happen during the day? Like, yeah. yeah, like the siege yeah. of terror actually only happened twelve hours a day. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone just just packed up and went home. It, yeah. it it's just doesn't work at the minute. It's really strange, and 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 it's it's just the fact that it, it is going to be night fighting in the first turn. Yeah. So you have to pay five points to to put searchlights and things in vehicles and and. and and counter it because it, it, it's not the fact that oh i'm going to be clever and do this thing to improve my chances on first turn it's more a case that if you don't do it you'll be punished yeah 
yeah i think yeah how about you lee have you you've actually ignored night fight every time you played haven't you i just find it fucking stupid it just like narratively game wise it doesn't make any sense to me it's like why are they scared of the dark <laughs> like i mean ballistic skill maybe i could argue that all right it's night time but they can see in the dark but you know whatever but yeah i don't know like they're space marines they can see in the dark they don't even need their fucking helmets or special night vision to be able to see in the dark they can literally see in the dark we shall know no fear except like, when we're fighting like, at night right i mean news flash like <laughs> I, my last tour of afghan was nearly 15 years ago I had dual night vision goggles and a fucking NVG scope, like a sand scope, like, and almost everything I did was at night. I wasn't scared <laughs> of being in the dark. I bet everyone else was. <laughs> and, I could see, and I could see fucking everything. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, this, this, this is now, and you can see everything at night. Yeah. Like, 30,000 years in the future... I like to think we've lost the technology. <laughs> <laughs> so, dark age, just, dark age scopes that have been lost, right? Yeah. But even if you argued it from like forget like the the fluff and just go from a rules perspective, like it still, I, it just fucking annoys me more than anything. Because like you say, you just end up taking night vision on anything you can. You take augury scanners on everything. Yeah, it just, it's, an, it's another set of rules that didn't. I think there's a lot of things in this edition that rules, things that didn't do much before. They've gone, oh, let's make that do something now, and it's just yeah. like, like pinning and things. Yeah, and that night night fighting didn't do much before unless you were, a, you know, unless you were a couple of certain legions that could maximize on that. Yeah, and but yeah. now it's just well, I, feel, the other way. I feel like that's how they should have done it. They should have had night fighting to allow those legions to maximize their yeah. legion rules rather than it having a negative impact on everyone else like yeah. if, if you had night fighting and it affected like a militia force i would understand that you got a load of fucking idiots that are badly trained poorly equipped and they know there's a load of marines running around in the dark they're gonna get scared like yes, it's pretty true. you know what yeah. i mean if you're a superhuman fucking see in the dark ninja assassin you're not scared of it. it you don't even know it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a fucking helmet on. Like yes. everything's got a green like green wash on it. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. only reason you know it's dark is because the moon's up and the sun isn't. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I just feel like there's, yeah, I feel like there's a thousand better ways they could have done it than just having these negative impacts yeah. that don't really bring anything to the game other than just being a bit fucking annoying really I, it's, that's my personal but I, like i say i haven't really played with it because every game i've played we've just fucking ignored gone about it yeah very wise uh so yeah so uh some good uh good things on, on that one i think for me if night fight was on a full wrap uh then um it, even that might be a little bit of a change because it adds some uncertainty but exactly as harry said it's going to go off. Is a five out of six chance that you're going to get night fight. Uh, so just take the augury scanners and the searchlights. But then the problem is that the augury scanners have problems in and of themselves as well. So, um, and then I think that those issues have just sort of compounded each other. And then these are all interweaving issues, these three things, because then the nemesis bolters come into their own because yeah. of the um uh, because, because of the then you can fight, snipe out it? your augury scanners exactly yeah. right it's... and i think that these are interlinked things that are compounding issues within the game currently um and um but my biggest fear is because they are such a big impart important part of the rule set that they won't be changed on a on a fact i think is the the things uh for me that is quite worrying anyway i think that brings us to the end of this show can we go to the next one please Lee? so that brings us to the end so uh, if you um, have any thoughts about uh, the three things, the sniper rifles, the night fight or all scanners, we'd love to know your opinion. So please write in the comments uh, below. Uh, of course, continue using hashtag heresy hammer 
please if you're watching this on youtube and you don't uh follow us or subscribe to us please make sure that you do and like the video uh and comment we'd love to hear uh that you enjoyed the show and we'd love to hear uh what we could do to improve it as well uh if you've got any lists please send them to heresyhammer 30 at gmail.com because we'd like to review some of those in our tactical section when we can we hope you've enjoyed this one thank you very much to harry uh for uh standing in for both john and uh paul it was really insightful to get all your thoughts on both the tactical no. section harry and your thoughts on imperial fists as well you are welcome back anytime so please 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 come back on not if it's going to take this long jesus <laughs> <laughs> Let it that bit uh, this, this room should have been repainted by now <laughs> <laughs> anyway take care guys can i, uh, can I add one go thing? yeah go, go for it yeah. if, you want, if you've got any legion specifically you want us to do a deep dive in then then put a comment we've already had one comment someone wants alpha legion doing next so oh God, we have um, to get Harry back for that. Sorry, another four yeah. hours. So let us know, and the one that gets the most comments, we'll 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 do next. That one, awesome. All right, take care, guys, and see you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.